Good morning and welcome to Scarborough Beach for Super Sunday. Day two of the 2024 SunSmart WA Surf Lifesaving Championships. My name is Mick Collis. Joining me in commentary for the day will be the voice of summer, Hayden Marchetto. Hayden, a fantastic day of racing yesterday. It's going to be even better today. Well, what a wonderful day of racing it was yesterday. It wasn't much swell, so everyone had to race hard. The wind didn't really come in until a bit later in the afternoon. But what we saw was some ripples in the ocean. A little bit of a wave towards the end of the day, and hopefully today it'll pick up as the tide goes out. Mick wonderful day of racing. I can't go past seeing uh, Johan Szymanski swim in that under-19 Taplin. Uh, but then the, the boys from Mullaloo, Lockie Bean uh, and, and his team, Donica Murphy and Brody Lee, they won five gold medals all the way from 17s to 19s in those three events. And some of the ladies, wow, they just ripped it up yesterday. And what are you looking forward to today? So today, all, all the irons, a lot of iron finals today. The young, young whippersnappers showcasing their development through nippers into, uh, into their youth section. Open iron, of course. 19s, they had their iron yesterday. So we've got the 17s. We've got the Jack Reddy Memorial today, this morning, which will be unreal. But Surf Life Saving WA, they've, they've shined a light on surf sports and it's a wonderful occasion to be celebrated as everyone gets ready either to finish their year or get ready for Aussies in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, so for me, so many questions remain unanswered. As you mentioned, who's going to ring that bell? On the under-17, Jack Reed perpetual trophy. That's going to be a cracker. Will the Hewitts become the first siblings in history to take out the men's and the women's open surf race? Um, will will it be the young bucks of, of Lou Kegger, Paddy Eli, dominating the, the podium in that open male ski? Or will the old guard of Dan Humble and, and Reese Baker still continue? And which club will have the depth to take out that six-man open male taplin at the end of the day? It's going to be a fantastic day of racing. It's great to have you with us. This is the 2024 WA SunSmart Surf Life Saving Championships. Call Mickey. We're off. Okay, we're ready for a start. We have on the line in the under-14 male board race final. Should be a wonderful race. So a little bit of nervous energy for the young man in the under 14 male board final that is away in Water Arena 1, North Cottesloe, out to an early lead in the first race of Super Sunday. Cracking program coming up for people on the beach or watching at home.
culminating in that six-man open male taplin final at the end of the day but out here in the water it is north cottesloe early leaders sorrento not far behind So Trigg leading this one, Northcott in second place, third place, third is Trigg and Sorrento. So around that apex marker and in they hit, come now. So Trigg Island out in front, Northcott chasing hard back, back to his knees while the Trigg paddler stays down. Probably picks up a little run which is unreal to see for him. He's put one or two board lengths on that second place paddler and as we say in these younger races first of the can usually brings it home so let's just see how the ocean's going to test them at the moment so we'll see them tack a bit to the left of our screen So final stages of this under 14 male board relay final. Trig Island now in the lead by two or three board lengths. As we've seen just during the warm-up though, little waves can pop up, but I think he might be safe. Not a whole lot coming behind him. Northcott, little bubble under sitting underneath him in second place. Trig Island still pushing hard. Northcott working hard as well. He needs to pull over this one to make a race of it. Working hard. It's just going to drop off the back. So it's going to be the Trig Island competitor. And he will take out the first gold medal of Super Sunday in the under 14 male board race. Trig Island in first, Northcott second, and an absolute race for third between Sorrento and Trig. It's going to be who's to get the first off, grab the board, and it's going to be Trig. So great racing, great way to start the day. Okay, so that was our winner there, Billy Hawks, Finlay Sullivan in second place and Ollie Brown in third place. So they're your first medalists of the day. And we have the open female board now in the water, the semi-final of the open female board. And Anna Kanegas out early here. She is flying by, but we're, we're back with the under... And just like that, we're away again, Mick. So the under-14 female boat, and they're just going to hit a little wall up of water. See who can handle that well. And the Mullaloo girl is gone. She's put a board length on. Same with the on the southern edge. I think that's a trick competitor. She's got out really strongly here. I think she surprised herself, the wriggler. So she's flying here at the moment. So that southern edge is getting quite a good rip out there, to be honest. It's actually helping those paddlers. So out in front at the moment, we've got Trig Island, then City of Perth, and then... Just to the ne next to the right to the of them, we've got Mullaloo. So City of Perth, just with that green nose cracker, the green nose of the aqua body cracker out in front. Trig Island to her right. So I think that might be Sky McCaffrey in that city of Perth on that blue board with the little orange nose on it. She's about a board length ahead. She's an amazingly talented young paddler. And she is clearing away from this field at the moment. She's put a good solid board length on. Trig Island there as well, along with Mullaloo. But at the moment, as you'll see when they turn this can, city of Perth is building a fairly commanding lead in the early stages, making the way out to the apex can. She'll pick up a bit of an advantage when she swings around with those runs behind her.
So it is the City of Perth in first, Sorrento in second. So City in first, Sorrento in second, Mullaloo in third place at the moment. City of Bunbury there in fourth. Closing stages of this under 14 female board relay final. So much happening here this morning in Super Sunday. Waves coming through. They're going to make a difference as the day goes on. But it is the City of Perth competitor. She's got a wave underneath her. She might take this all the way to the beach to wrap this one up. Needs to work hard. Just drops off the back. That makes it interesting now with the back mark as it gives them just a little bit of a sniff. Freeyard moved into third, City in the lead, Sorrento second, Fremantle in third, Mullaloo in fourth, wave coming for the back markers. Here they come, it's going to be a run up the beach. City of Perth needs to hold Fremantle on the wave, Mullaloo on the wave, Mullaloo skews, City of Perth, Riggles, Fremantle, Mullaloo, City of Perth's out of it, Sorrento gets up, Mullaloo's going to steal it. Can Sorrento get there? It's going to be a line race, who's going to get there? Mullaloo takes it. Wow, we've talked about the impact of this wave. Mullaloo steals the gold. City of Perth led basically from the start, just got caught in that little break. Sorrento in third and Fremantle in fourth, but great racing in the under 14 female board race. Then out in the water is the under 15 male board final. Sorrento in first place as they head around the Cairns, followed by Northcott. Northcott and then Cottesloe, but a couple of board lengths already in the lead. Robbie Duffy it is from Sorrento. We called him a lot of times yesterday. Terrific young competitor. Ned Eldon from Cottesloe in second place. Northcott now just edging their way. So the top four as they stand, Sorrento, Northcott, Cottesloe. As you can see on the pictures from the overhead shot there, it's about a five board length lead that the Sorrento paddler has got. Northcott clearly in second, Cottesloe in third. Fourth is Sorrento, wave building. Into the wave zone, now they come. Sorrento paddler in the lead, working hard. He needs to try and keep ahead of this bubble. Here it starts to come. It's going to provide some lift for second and third. Cottesloe's on it. North Cottesloe's on it. Will it be quick enough? Sorrento's off. Robbie Duffy, he's off and running. The quickest way to the line is to run, and he's going to take it out comfortably. The minor placing, City of Perth is there. They're just coming to contention. Ty O'Till needs to keep his feet, he can't do it. So it's going to be Sorrento, North Cottesloe, Cot, and the City of Perth. Oh, tremendous racing and tricky conditions. And in the water, still in that water arena one as it just keeps on rolling through. Under 15 female board race. The final underway. So it's Trig Island in the lead at the first turning can. Northcott, it is Scarborough in second place. Trig Island in third and Northcott in fourth. That is your top four. Northcott competitor up on her knees now. Just drops down to the stomach to negotiate that turning can. Very tight. Trig's now snuck their way into first place as they turned around that can. Northcott competitor got wedged a little bit further out. Delta Cross from Northcott. Macy Boisvert is in the lead for Trig Island as she turns the final can and heads to home. 
It's a little bit of a run back up onto her knees. So Trig, one, two, Northcott in three. And the rating of Macy Boiver lifts now as she can sense that gold medal. She can almost see it on the shoreline. The chase pack continues though. Trig, one, two, Northcott, three, four. Start to come into the danger zone. Boivert just continues that rating. Alicia Beanie in second place. It's Trig 1-2 at the moment. Bit of a wave coming. It might be enough for Boivert. It might be enough. Will it be enough? She works hard. Can she pull over the top of it? Can she wrap it up? Works hard. Just drops off the back. Gives her a bit of a lift though. Boiver, the two trick competitors, one, two, Northcott coming. And it's going to be a fairly smooth victory here for Trigg. They will go one, two at the moment, although here comes Northcott, Delta Cross. So Trigg go one, two, and it will be Northcott winning the sprint up the beach. Only just that little travelator at the end. So Trigg one, two, Northcott in three. And for Sorrento there and Cottesloe. And some wild action in that short break with boards as well. So some great racing to get Super Sunday away. Already four gold medals have been run and won. Okay, water route number two at the moment. We have the first semi final of the open male ski. And what a field we have. We've got Reese Baker in there. Luke Egger. Harry Hewitt's also there. Sam Myers just fresh back from a wonderful series where he's made a junior national kayak team. Charlie Hewitt's there also. Eddie Host, the big man, he's there. He, watch for his start. He's one of the fastest men up and down the coast. He's got the peak on and the, the thermal underneath. He's uh, a rashy at the moment. So he's probably, as you're, on your, as you're looking at your screen at the moment, three or four from the left. He's one of the fastest starters to the can, you can see. Devin Karen also there. Great to see him paddling. And one of the early favourites, just as we pan past, Patrick Eli. So we are underway so around the world. Swell's come up a metre and a half compared to yesterday, Mick, and... Uh, 16 seconds swell period, so we, we might be uh, we might be in for some fun later on today when we get some wind on that water. Yeah, look, we're already seeing the difference that that can make. Just that little bit of a lump as it comes in, sort of about 30 or 40 metres offshore. And if you're in the lead and you get it, you're home. If you just miss it, well, it opens the door right up for those people behind you. So it's one of these events where you are never out of it until you've crossed that line as the open male single ski semi-final number one. They make their way to the water's edge. This is a class field. Top eight through to the final. You've got to be at your best to get through. This is an amazing field. Dan Humble, Harry Hewitt, Pat Eli, Luke Egger, Sam Myers. So many names. So this is like an Aussie semi-final, to be honest. Any of these guys can make that Aussie semi-final. So massive opportunity. Dan Humble just getting himself ready, holding his ski up. That's the orange ski in the middle of our picture as you can see it at the moment. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, bit of a shore break here, so it's gonna cause a bit of problems. I was watching the Queenscliff uh, New South Wales State Champs this morning and they were having the same, same problems and it was coming home where the skew was happening. So we're just waiting now. They put their hands up if, they don't, if they're unsure that's the start, but a big opportunity now for you to get some early, early blood flow through the arms.
And away they go, straight into it. But look at Ed Hosko. He's out and gone, ladies and gentlemen. This could be one of the boil overs of the day. Ed Host is flying out there. He will be, he's already a ski almost in front. So Patrick Ealy's there also, and young Luke Edgar. So, just to speed the speed of Luke Edgar, he was one of the fastest paddlers in the world over 75 metres. And there he is at the moment. He is probably in the level, level first place. It's just whether he can hang on. But a great start by the youngster. So Ed Host, he'll be first to the can here. So we'll get out to that red and yellow can, or the black and white can. We'll go around, turn right, then hopefully pick up a couple little runs. So we'll just get now a bit of a view with these really strong watermen out in the water to see what kind of lift they'll get when they go around this green and white can. So at the moment it is Host in first place, Luke Egger in second, Dan Humble riding the V in third, Reese Baker on the right-hand side as well. So three in a row as they head out. So Reese Baker just sneaks his way around. Luke Egger gets caught up. He's got Dan Humble ski right under his arm. They don't have that in the kayak racing. Welcome to surf, Luke Egger, says Dan Humble. Really tight at the cans. Egger being squeezed out. More carnage there happening at the cans. Humble's being caught. Egger's being caught. So it's one, two, three. Reese Baker gets away cleanly. Carnage at that first turning apex can. So Humble's got a bit of work to do. He's gone from second to ninth. So he'll get a lift now, no doubt. He won't panic. He's raced this before. He'll count his strokes to the next can and get going. But that was some argy-bargy. But Reese Baker kept clean water. Had that inside line, which means you've got that inside paddle no matter what. And he'll just cruise coming in. Yeah, it's just amazing what happens to those cans. They were so even heading out at them. And then all of a sudden, that race has just been split wide open. Paddlers now all in clear water. Reese Baker... Out in the lead. So Sorrento, that'll be in second place. I think that's Patrick Ealy, so he'll be pretty comfortable sitting in that position at the moment. Ed Host there is also, he'll finish fourth. Dan Humble looks like he's going to finish fifth. These guys should be safe as long as there's no wave coming up, but in front of, at the moment. Yeah, so Charlie Hewitt's also going to get through here, which is great. Yeah, Charlie Hewitt had a fantastic paddle. He avoided all that carnage at the cans. Got himself into some clear water. So it is. Reese Baker will cross the line in first. Patrick Ealy, second place. Chucky Hewitt there. Oh, the wave Baker building. They've got to get through here. Oh, Humble's got to hold this. Oh, I'll leave it to the judges. Harry Hewitt sneaking through as well. So top eight. Luke Egger might have just missed out. I'm not sure there, Mick. So, an, an amazing race. Wow. Anything could happen. You need a bit of ability, a bit of luck. Okay, and the under 14 mile surf race now on your pitches. Look for the guys from Trig Island, Ollie Brown. He's the one to beat in this one. But same with Billy Hawks. Billy Hawks will be right in amongst it. So the two trick boys plus the Sereno boys there all flying out to the cans here. But Ollie Brown at the moment in the centre of your picture with the red, white and green cap from Trig Island. He will be the one to beat. He was the Aussie gold medalist. He's won most of the swims this year. So his opportunity to cement himself as the best swimmer in the state. He has a look behind there. Sees his teammate Billy Hawks just on his feet. So Billy's working very hard here to make sure he maintains that sense of urgency and working very well alongside his teammate from Ollie, Ollie Brown from Trig Island. So it is Trig 1 2, Sorrento 3 4 5 at the moment. There's a line of green on the feet of those two Trig competitors as they turn that blue and white swim can. Trig with about a body length over his teammate, then two body lengths back to the pack from Sorrento. So it's Trig 1, 2, then Sorrento 3, 4, 5 at this stage. They're kind of not working with each other, though. That's what they need to do. They're almost swimming on top of each other, and they need to not panic. And you can see how Billy's just hanging on the feet here because he knows Ollie's going to take him the shortest way around, around the swim. So they'll go around this uh, blue and white can and head towards the blue and white flags on the, on the 
beach, but it'll be these two who are going to fight it out. I don't imagine that the Sorrento competitor from third place is going to catch them unless they get that party wave. And so Ollie Brown heads for home now. He'll angle in, but you've got to be careful not to angle in too tight because that means you're going to swim a bit further than everyone else. So Ollie Brown one, Billy Hawks two, Sorrento in three. Yeah, so the two trick competitors just racing smart there. Just one tapping on the toes of the one in front, whereas Hayden, as you mentioned, the Sereno guys swimming alongside each other and over the top of each other. So now we do have those two trick competitors. Sorrento closing, though. This is where we're coming to this little danger zone that we've spoken about and we will continue to speak about. Trig 1, 2, Sorrento 3, 4 and 5. Three medals on the line. Trig Island now thinking when to stand, when to keep swimming, tries to milk a little bit of a run. Has a look around, sees he's got some clear water. Touches the sand, makes his way to his feet. And that's going to be a great victory for Ollie Brown from Trig Island. Billy Hawks in second place. So Trig go 1-2. And Sorrento to pick up the bronze medal. And then out in the waters for the final stages of this under 14 male surf race. It is heat number two of the open male single ski. And again, a very strong field. Josh Windsor. Ken Jenkinson, the great Jack Reddy from the city of Perth. Brennan Sarson from Trig Island, great to see him back and racing. Michael Booth from Sorrento. Brendan Peters. And they are away, heat number two, top eight through to the final. Jack Reddy gets away clean on that orange ski on the southern side. And Jack Reddy is absolutely away. Sarson, though, chasing hard. And Michael Booth out on that right-hand side as well. And on your screens in Water Arena 1 is the under-14 female surf race. The final. Plenty happening on Super Sunday. Great to see a good crown and plenty of surf life-saving royalty down on the beach this morning. Alison O'Toole, James O'Toole. Quality athletes, quality spectators. So in the under-14 surf race, looks like North Cottesloe in the lead. City of Perth in second place. Sorrento in third. Northcock competitor having a, a good look around. So Northcott, City of Perth competitor trying to get up on her feet. Again, a little bit of assistance. Then once they turn that can, it'll be every young lady for herself but at the moment it is northcott in first city of perth in second sorrento in third and fourth the depth of this sorrento club is really impressive at the moment they've got a lot of good years coming ahead of them the green machine so they turn for home northcott in the lead city of perth chasing hard sorrento as well scarborough in their mix as well Another City of Perth cap, City of Bunbury, Cottesloe. A good mix of clubs. Right. 
So into the wave zone they come. North Cop competitor lifting her head really high out of the water to see where she's going. Looks like it might be Sky McCaffrey will try and pick up who these young ladies are. So Neve Tierney, she's in a lead. Little wave, wave breaking behind her at the moment. Will she get the lift that she needs to make her momentum happen? And she does. She'll be really stoked with that little swim. And the young lady setting her own record straight. Neve Tierney is our gold medalist, ladies and gentlemen, in the under-14 female swim. Party wave out the back, Mick. Here we go. This is where the action's at. Sky McCaffrey, she'll finish second. Just makes it through. Sorry, can, uh, Leah van der Aal. Well done, Leah. Great swim by yourself. Then Sorrento in third place. Sorrento fourth. And they keep on rolling through. Great work there. Coogee Beach, Trig Island, Fremantle. So Neve Tierney from North Cottesloe taking out the gold medal. And Leah van den Adel from the city of Perth taking out the silver. Great swim from her. Held that second spot for the entire way around and rewarded with the silver medal. Almost missed the finishing shoot. That could have been a disaster. But just snuck in at the end. And Hayden in that second semi-final of the skis, it looked like the veteran Stephen Bird, we think, was the first across the line yeah i think that's provisional i think they're still going through the through the results as you can see there's the ego of skis not so much of an ego at the moment because they're waiting to see who is through and who isn't but definitely some epic paddlers uh, De devon karen getting through So on the water's edge is the under-17 Iron Woman final. That means we're just one race away from the Jack Ready Perpetual Trophy under-17 Iron Man. Who will ring the bell in that under-17 Iron Man? So as we just scan along, the competitors looking pretty comfortable down on the line. A little bit of a wave there from, I think that might have been Anna Negus. So Anna Negus is the reigning champion. So we'll see how she goes. She did extremely well at Aussies. Had a tougher day yesterday, but I know Eleanor Flowers is going to put it to him because it's swim board. So you look for Kyra Tini. This is a cracking race. Kyra Tini, North Cot, Millie Cock, Trig Island, Matilda Smith, Fremantle. Rowan Brent White from Cottesloe. Sienna Howard, Cottesloe. She's a big chance also. Annika Negus, Trig Island, we've already spoken about there. Eleanor Flowers, I expect to see her first out of the water today. Isla Barclay, Mullaloo, Bethany Banfield. The lady who smiles more than anyone I've ever seen. It's wonderful to see. Harriet Chin, of course, last year pushed all the way here. Run, uh, got a bronze medal in the Open yeah, Iron Women. Yeah. Uh, Ellen Borden, Kate Rigol from Cottesloe. Tilly Marketo making her first ever final for Iron. Hannah Young and Olivia Dotty. So it's actually a split. So this is a split of first year 17s and second year 17s. So for some of the younger girls, there's this opportunity to beat some of the older uh, 17 competitors. Super exciting. Yeah, really, a really quality field. Um, you know, as you spoke, Eleanor Flowers, we, we just see, she doesn't always get off the beach very quick, but the back end of her swim is just extraordinary. So you'd expect her to be right up the pointy end when they transition to that board. We, we've spoken about the ability of, of Annika Negus. I love the fight of Olivia Dotty. She just never gives up. Parrot Chin, you mentioned Hannah Young had a great day out yesterday. So this race certainly wide open. I'm going to put something on the line here, Mick. He's gone early. Eleanor Flowers wins the swim here today in this iron race. She'll win the open female swim. Wow. It's a tough field. I know. Really good, really good swimmers in that space. But this young girl is on the up, and she is absolutely flying at the moment. You heard I do it like Anna, I do like Annika Negus, though, in this race. I think she's put in a, a really solid block of training for the last six months, and the opportunity here as we seeing the under 15 sorry under 14 
So under 15, a male surf race coming in now. It's not on our pitches, but it's a battle. It's a massive battle here. So there's two North Cot competitors and two City of Perth competitors. So we'll see how this is going to play out, ladies and gentlemen, in the under 15, a male surf race. But here we go. Under, under 17, iron, they're away. So across that bank, Negus, the long stride of Annika Negus. Looks like Beth Bamforth as well there from Mullaloo. Ducking and diving, getting themselves out through this break so they can start getting into their rhythm of the swim. And it looks like Mullaloo slightly in the lead. So just off screen in the under 15 male surf race was Northcott City, Northcott City. So in this white water machine at the moment, we can see it's so close. No one's taking the early lead. Some of the girls may be conserving, but Harriet Chin's gone for it. She is absolutely flying. Same with Kyratini and Kate Rigol there in the middle. She's pushing away through, but Beth Bamforth is in the lead at the moment, ladies and gentlemen, from the Mullaloo Club. Wonderful pictures here from our SunSmart drone live around the world. Yeah, Beth Bamforth at the Arrowhead. She'll have some clean water. Although it looks like Northcott, oh, now they're just about to swamp her. There's four, four, five, six girls going around this can. There's some squats. One side. I'd rather be at the back here That's and swim around the outside because you'll be doing breaststroke for the next 15 minutes otherwise. Wonderful pictures. If you can actually get yourself back up to the surface of the water, just being squashed out there. Coratini's now got body length lead. Yeah, Coratini just, she just swam right up and over the top of Beth Bamforth, just went around her as they approached the cans. Now she's put a body length on. So the chase pack, Coratini in the lead. It looks like Beth Bamforth there in second place. Annika Negus trying to get herself some clear water as well. Eleanor Flowers pushing up now. She can see this where. So Annika Negus is in second place. Eleanor Flowers is working overtime in the middle there. To the right of her is Kate Rigol. So there's, there's, that's your first four competitors at the moment. But Coratini, she'll be taking a bit of a relax here because she's got clear water and she's not having to fight the people around her. So there's two round of cans now. Uh, so Coratini one, Annika Negus two, Kate Rigol three, and Eleanor Flowers four. So I'm interested to see this is where Eleanor Flowers does the most damage to these swim fields. When she turns those cans... This is where she's often at the strongest, but I think Tierney might have a little bit too much of a lead at the moment. She's swimming extremely well in the opening leg of this under-17 Iron Woman final. Kyra Tierney is from Northcott in the lead. Negus from Trig Island in second. Flowers from Trig in third. So really tight bunching, isn't it? But as you can see that Kyra Tierney, when she made that move around that first can, it's now given her the benefit of clear water. So the girls have all got clear water. Rigol's pushing up into fourth or fifth at the moment. Then we've got Hannah Young there. On the right-hand side of the screen, we've got, on the top of the screen at the moment, we've got Millie Cock. But this is, a, at the moment, Tierney's laying it down. She knows she needs to get a good head start here. She hasn't, but she hasn't probably had the board summer that she's probably liked. So she gets away here, gets that opportunity. She gets a little run inside here, or is there going to be a party wave, Mick? We've seen already today there can be a party wave and can bring the whole field up. All the work you've done may not matter if there's a wave on, and I think there's one building, a small one at that. Yep, and that's all it's going to take. So Tinny, she's getting into that danger zone where there are waves coming from behind her. She's in dead water. Here's some waves to the back markers. Will they pick it up? Yes, they do. So it looks like, oh, no one's managed to hang on to it. They're all to their feet, though. So Kyra Tinny is the first one up. Annika Negus there in second. Eleanor Flowers in third. They're your top three in the under-17 Iron Woman final. So a few of the back markers might pick up a little wave here now. So all the girls transitioning well. It looks, it looks a bit deep, doesn't it, the old sand today? It looks heavy under feet. Heavy under feet, but... So Kyratini's out. I do back, I would like to back Annika Negus from here. She is absolutely flying on the board at the moment. Kyratini's got a bit of work to do. Eleanor Flowers will do well to hold on to third place as she gets swamped by all the other competitors. Olivia Dotty's now moved into third place. Millie Cock, Eleanor Flowers, Beth Bam, fourth. Their names, names keep coming on. Harriet Chin just getting squeezed out there. Kate Rigol pushes through. City of Bunbury's also there. Yeah, Olivia Dotty's the one to watch for me. She, she races angry. She's a bit like Harry Hewitt. She's a great chasing athlete and she's just got her head down. She's staying on her stomach. 
just working hard to try and get on the wash of Annika Negus. So Kyra Tenney in the lead from Northcott. Annika Negus on her tail. Olivia Dodotti chasing to try and get on the wash of Annika Negus. So here we go. We round that cam. We'll head to the apex, or, a, around the apex oranges and then back around the green and white can. So at the moment, Kyra Tenney's paddled exceptionally well. She's proved this wrong, Mick. She's such a racer. She does not like losing and... While she's a, 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 a fair person, she really wants to take this one out. This would be, she's a first year 17, taking it up against a second year 17, who's one of the best in the But she just hits a can, Mick. She gets, she gets stopped in her tracks. That's oh, what can happen. A little bit of an experience there from the youngster, Kyra Tierney. Put the nose into the can. Annika Negus, and here comes Dottie as well. Just picking up a bit of a run. So Annika Negus has pulled up alongside Kyra Tierney. Olivia Dottie now, she's got a sniff as well. Kyra Tierney, she's being squeezed out. Dottie chasing, Dottie catches. It's going to be Negus. Tierney, Dottie now looks like she's almost hit the lead. It's going to be Dottie and Negus. Tierney's dropped back to third. The two trick girls going one, two. So here we go. The finishing stage is party wave out the back. Can they get a lift, these three girls? Kyra Tierney needs to work hard to get down it. This could be Annika Negus' moment. Olivia Dottie's working so hard on the inside. Annika Negus is now pushing to the north of the course. Olivia Dotty, will she get down? And she will. Oh, it will be does. a race up the beach. Oh, so it's going to be Negus against Dotty. It's going to be a foot race. They're both off. Dotty's got the inside water. Negus might be quicker. Here comes Olivia Dotty, though. Olivia Dotty, she went in the water in third. She's going to win it. Olivia Dotty from Trigon. Great chase. One of the hungriest athletes. She will take out the under 79 woman final. She's pretty happy with it, too. Annika Negus, great racing from you and Kyra Tierney in third place. Great racing, under 17, Iron Woman final. Absolutely awesome. Our future stars. And how strong is this age group, Mick? If you look at the girls that are coming through and look who, who and the results from last year, the results from Opens, you know, Sienna Howard just crossing the line, Kate Rigol, that, that is a world-class quality field. Uh, we are so blessed with the young ladies in WA coming through and, and it's a real credit to the surf sports around we, WA. We certainly are. And on the line, it is the under-17 Ironman race, the Jack Reddy, Jack Reddy Perpetual Trophy on the line. The great man Jack Reddy is with us. Jack, it's an exciting race. This is the one all these competitors want to win. Do you have a favourite going into the race? I must admit, I do have a favourite Mick. His name's Brody Lee, and to show my age a little, his mum took my first ski sessions ever at Mullaloo Beach. So, um, yeah, a little bit of a favourite there. So, and Brody Lee had a day out yesterday. I think five gold medals, Hayden, he, he picked up. So he's certainly in good touch, but he, he's not going to do it on his own, is he? Olivia, congratulations. No, How good was that? Quick heat, good swim, good run, and a good board. Yeah, I'm really happy with that one. It's my last under 7 iron woman in WA before I moved, so... It's great to win it. And have a good trick uh, teammate to your left as well, urging you on as well? Yeah. Well, it's my first year at Chig, but I love the Chig girls. And to have Annika come second, then Millie and Eleanor and Tilly in the race as well, it's just great to have them along my side. There's just a bit of a bubble coming in into that wave there. You just rode that very well and looked over your shoulder, and then you just beautiful sprint up the beach to complement your race. Yeah, I was so close missing that wave, but I just put my head down and kept going and got over it. Well done, congratulations, and enjoy being a gold medalist. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Great work, Cam, and congratulations to Olivia. Uh, so here in the water in the under-17 Jack Reddy Perpetual Trophy, the under-17 Ironman. So, Jack, what's going through these young guys' minds at the moment midway through this first swim league? It all depends on your athlete. So I can see the first person in the lead looks like a Serrano cap. He might be thinking, I'm just a swimmer. I've got to go really, really hard. And the other people might be trying to sit, trying to conserve a little, just as we can see those Malalu guys. The rubber band's stretching a little bit on their feet, but they could be looking to conserve and really explode once they get onto that board, Mick. So it is Sorrento in the lead at the moment in the under-17 iron, one of the most prestigious events on this calendar. It looks like the Malalu crew they're sniffing around. We saw them dominating yesterday. There was three teams winning the under-17 board relay, the under-19 board relay, the 17 taplin, the 19 taplin as well. And this is where the Mullaloo now, they start to make their move on that Sorrento competitor. Marcus Booth it is from Sorrento. And it looks like it might be Bridie Lee in second place. He's got a big tank, a big engine, and a lot of talent. Donica Murphy is right there alongside him. And it also looks like Cottesloe in the mix. City of Bunbury as well. 
And as we start to uh, approach this wave zone, Jurgis Wilson's in ears from, from Cottesloe. Booth has now been caught by the Mullaloo pack, and they start to get into that little bit of a wave zone here. Now, Jackie, you're praying for a wave. <laughs> That's what's going through your head. Oh, absolutely. These kids will be taking a little sniff under their armpits, see what's coming through. They know they're not going to get a lot of help, but as we look now, there's a little bit of a wave appearing on screen. It could bring the back markers back through, Mick. So here they go. There's a big one coming. We might get three or four on it. We'll definitely get two. We will get three. So we'll wait and see. Yeah. So Marcus Booth is certainly one that picked it up. Did Brady Lee get it? Did Donicky get it? We'll soon find out. I think it's Jurgens. Jurgens has got it definitely for sure there. So Jurgens from Brody Lee. Brody Lee is there as well. And Marcus Booth. So there's your one, two, three. Board leg to go in the under 79 man. So they op open up now across the top of this thing. And as, as we say, the transition is the most important thing. Donica Murphy trying to get on the tail of these guys because it's going to fight it out between Booth. They are absolutely flying, these young men. Then we know that Donica Murphy can paddle aboard. He's on there now trying to get past Jurgens to get himself into third. So Booth, he's got away clean. Brody Lee in second place there from Mullaloo. And then the chase pack coming. Donica Murphy just getting ahead of Jurgens now to take him way into third. He'll try and jump on the feet of his teammate. They spent a lot of time together. They've won a lot of medals together. They'd love to get on the podium again today. But at the moment, Marcus Booth in the lead. So Marcus Booth, he'll, he'll cement his space here at the moment. Brody's the one who has to chase, but Brody will power up to it, no doubt. He'll then, I reckon he'll take an inside line when he can, and he'll work those little runners across the back there once they get around these orange cans. So massive paddle this will be there for Marcus Booth, the paddle of his life. I think he's got it in him, to be honest. Brody Lee has had a wonderful carnival so far, but I reckon with the work that Mar Marcus has been doing, this is a big opportunity for him to be what will we one of the recipients of the wonderful Jack Reddy trophy. So, Jack, you're Brady Lee at the moment. You're sitting behind Marcus Booth. You're on his tail. At what point do you tell yourself, I've got to pounce, I've got to go? He's got to go straight off this last can, Mick. I think he's been sitting on his tail a little bit. That's saying Marcus Booth has looked very comfortable. He's not been looking around. He doesn't look nervous. He looks calm, poised and positioned. And look at him now, turning it on. We'd love to see Brody Lee jump onto his knees. I don't think he's a lay-down paddler, but he really needs to turn it on on this last 100 metres, Mick. So we're in the dying stages. A little bit of a bump for Marcus Booth. Brody Lee working hard for it as well. Booth gets a bit more out of it. Brody Lee fights for it, though. Oh, this is a... Oh, Marcus Booth, he's milked that. He's still milking it. Marcus Booth from Sereno. He has just pulled away from Brody Lee. There was only about a three centimetres in it, and it was just enough, though, for Marcus Booth. And it ends up being, from what was neck and neck the entire way around, Marcus Booth, convincing winner of the under-17 Ironman. And Jack Reddy, thanks for your time. I'll let you go down and get him to ring that bell. Absolutely. Well done, Marcus Booth. Celebrate it. It doesn't come around every year. <laughs> it's the tough one to win. Marcus Booth from Sorrento, the under-17 Ironman champion. Jack Reddy will head down with the trophy. And Cam, I'm sure you'd love to get a, a word from Jack Reddy and Marcus Booth. And... I want to see all the crowd watching Marcus Booth ringing that bell, the famous bell of the Jack Reddy Perpetual Trophy. That's the one all these youngsters wanted to win. And Marcus Booth from Sorrento has done exactly that. Okay. Right, a quick interview, Marcus, all right? Yeah. Marcus, great effort, mate. Just that uh, little bit of a wave and uh, on the board, mate, just got you over the line. Yeah, I felt so happy about that, that wave. Everyone's been really racing well this year and training so hard, but yeah, job to everyone else. But it's pretty, pretty tricky, isn't it? We have a good swim and you know you have a board, but if you get a little wave, that can totally change the complex of the race. Yeah, 100%. Um, there's always a luck factor, which is really enjoyable about the sport. Yeah, well done, mate. Congratulations. How's it sound? Gold medalist. Yeah, it's awesome. Well done, mate. Congratulations. Marcus Booth, how was that, ladies and gentlemen? And he's going to ring the bell right in front of us. Give it a ring. You're not going to buy for whole beats, Marcus, but give it a ring. There it is. Set back. Jack Medal. Give it a ring. How good's that? Going right off there. Well done there. Yeah, fantastic pictures. Jack Reddy presenting the Jack Reddy Perpetual Trophy. Marcus Booth, ring the bell.
as the under-17 Ironman champion of Western Australia. So, plenty going on in the early stages of Super Sunday. Marcus Booth writing himself into the history books as the winner of the under-17 Ironman final. Some great names have gone before him. Ethan Jackson, certainly one of them. Will Savage, and now Marcus Booth as well. And on the start line, the under-19 female surf race final. Big field, Sienna Rawson from the city of Perth, Jenna Stormer from Sorrento, Sienna Menon from Northcott, Jade Bamforth, Mullaloo, Holly Fraser, Stella Morgan from the city of Perth, Tyler Richards from Northcott, Mia Jackson from the city of Perth, Georgia Moore from Trig Island, Sophie Barron Hay from the city of Perth, and Sammy Brigden from Trig Island, along with Sammy Lowry from Sorrento. They are on the line. Sophie Baron Hay picking up uh, the bronze medal in the mixed taplin yesterday. She was the only female swimmer to go off with the men to start the race. Had a wonderful swim. Set up her team for that bronze medal. But some great talent in this one. Yeah, great talent and wonderful to see as we've got beaming our pitches right around the world. This will be a fast start. I, lo I like the way the girls will go about this. Oh, Sophie Baron Hay across that bank. Terrific start. We know she can swim, and she's already given herself a half a body length as they head out towards that first little bump. But a great start by Sophie Baron Hay. Had a bit of a hiatus over summer, spent some time overseas, recently back in the pool, and great to see her back down to the beach racing. And Grace Young just got caught on her, on her heels there at the start, but I think she's pushed her way forward now. So she'll rejoin that group of people out the front. So at the moment it is a City of Perth trifecta, one, two, and three. Trig Island there as well, as well as Sorrento and two from Northcott. Approaching the first turning can, and it looks like it is Sophie Baron Hay has maintained the lead that she picked up from the start of this race. In clear water, won't get caught. We just saw the damage that can be done when you do get stuck on those cans with Sophie Baron Hay in clear water heading out towards the apex at the moment. So Sophie Baron Hay, clear water, as Mick has just said. George Moore in second place from Trig Island. Sammy Brigden's also there from Trig Island. And I'm waiting, I'm waiting to see when Sam Lowry comes through because she is a super swimmer as well as great kayak paddler and ski paddler. And what a day she had yesterday. So it is still Baron Hay in the lead. Sammy Lowry from Sorrento, we think, might just have snuck herself up there to second place. Final turning can, right-hand turn, they'll head for home. Sammy Brigden from Trigg in third. So it is Baron Hay, Lowry and Brigden. Lowry looked like she was going to make a move then, but... And, and once again, Mick, it's the importance of knowing where the cans have... Oh, they've all kind of... Sophie Baron has benefited because everyone's gone in a bit sharper, not understood 
where they need to go and then they've had to turn back out to the green and white can so at this stage the three girls out in front there that's where the medals are going to come from because there was some a bit of a, a bit of movement happening around the back here but now look at look at samantha lowry she's putting the big ones in she's got that six beat kick going and absolutely flying at the moment Will, will, will uh, Sammy Brigner be able to catch them? I'm not sure. Sophie Baron Hay looking really good in, really strong at the moment, but we're getting into the wave zone Ooh, and there is come. a bit of swell around. Here they come. So Sophie Baron Hay in the lead, hanging on. Lowry chasing Brigden in third place. It is the City of Perth in the lead. Sorrento second. Trig Island in third. Coming into that wave zone. The final stages of the under-19 female surf race. City of Perth in the lead. Sorrento second. Brigden from Trig Island in third. Great racing from these young ladies. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are going right down to the wire here. Brigden is working so hard. What a wonderful medal this will be for her. But Baron Hay coming extremely strong. Oh, she doesn't quite get it. That means they're in that kind of dishwash area. No waves at the moment. There's one popping up. Brigden's up. Same with Sophie Baron Hay. These girls know how to transition, let me tell you. Sophie Baron Hay's got a leg out of the water. There's a dip here now. Will she drop into it? No, she won't. The race for second is on. And Sammy Brigden will get there. Sam Lowry, what a swim. Yes, yeah, Sophie Baron Hay, gold medal for the city of Perth. Sammy Brigden from Trig Island in second, and Lowry from Sorrento in third. Those three girls had it from the cans. Great racing for the between the three of those. All deserved medal winners. City of Perth taking the gold. And they cleared out, didn't they, Mick, as we see the fourth, fifth, and sixth place getters there, which is still wonderful racing in an under-19 female surf race. But it all happened real quick around that last cam where they went on an angle and they couldn't quite get what, what, where they were going around. So the under-19 male surf race. Here we go. Pretty tight field. And it is Northcott, Fremantle, Cottesloe, Sorrento. And interestingly, in the under-19 male surf race, no Jules Fredenay. Must be the only race that he's not doing. Uh, I'd say so. Had a massive program yesterday. A big one again today. So the field, Jarvis Karen from Trig Island. Nick Collins from North Cot. Flynn Saplinski from Cot. Joel Dotty from Trig. I think we've got to hang on there, Mick. I don't think, I'm not sure all, any of those boys have gone into this race at the moment. I think we've got a, we've got a field of about five, five, right, five people and, uh, or six at this stage, seven people. Hayden Phillips' name's there. Ebden Prinsloo, Joe Quirk, Ewan Scribbins, Christian Sadie and Max Turner. So, we'll so Ebden's gone out like a flyer here. He's sitting in about fourth place. On the left, left of that is the Sorrento competitor. So we've got the Joey Quirk and Ewan Scriven. So they'll, they'll be the one-two punch. There's a Northcott competitor there also, which might be Maxi Turner or Nicholas Collins. Not quite sure. So here we go. We're running through. So closing stages here, and it looks like Ewan Scriven's out in front of, I know that familiar stroke of his, Joey Quirk just in behind there. Then we've got the Cottesloe boys, Flynn Sapinski and Christian Seidel. So let's see, we're coming now into the area. They've got a bit of work to do, no waves at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. But Ewan Scriven's out in front, that familiar stroke of his looking extremely strong, these young under 19 men. Pushing through at the moment, Christian Seidel from the Cottesloe Surf Life Saving Club. Still anyone's race, and we know they're coming into that zone, Mick. There's enough, there's four or five of them that can win it from here. I know that for sure, because it is a wave building. I've just seen one go under the, the green and white can. 
and they're in no man's land. You know when there's a break, that means there's going to be a wave, and here comes the waves. They're in that zone now, and there's five or six of them, so who's going to be the Hollywood? And look at the one out the back. Hollywood time, touch the ground. Who's going to be the man? The man of the moment. Oh, Scrivens is up. Oh, good, he's made a smart decision there. Quirk is up. Oh, they've just been swallowed by some of the water. Quirk, someone's Quirk's still running. He's, he's made the most of that little moment. He's the smart racer, this young man. And Quirk will get there. Really, what wonderful camaraderie that was, you and Scrivens. Had a great swim, but yet he saw the moment and saw his teammate get there and they embraced. I love seeing that kind of really strong camaraderie. Race hard. The finish line's the finish line. After the finish line, disappointment, elation, teammate. Love it. Yeah, no, it's terrific. I mean, we saw it yesterday with the team events, just how much it means for these guys. And they spend so much time together racing and, and training. So it is really nice when they do celebrate the victories of each other. As we know, blowing out someone else's candle doesn't make yours burn any brighter. So it is terrific for them to appreciate the success of their teammates. And then down on the start line is the under 19, in fact, the under 17 female surf race. We just saw Sophie Baron Hay take out the under 19 female surf race. This is the under 17 female surf race. And again, keep an eye on Eleanor Flowers. A big program for her. Marla Stewart in there from the city of Perth as well. Annie Kanegas, second from the left of the screen, as you can see it, just bounding out across that bank. Those long legs, such an advantage, heading out and into the ocean. Northcott will take the early lead, though. Negus right on her hammer. So Coratini, she is out and gone again. So Annika Negus and Coratini show, who will it be? How will they get there? Livia Dotty working really hard there. Also on, on the right-hand side of our screen, we've got Hannah Young. Eleanor Flowers pushing up hard in the middle. Coratini, so definitely the southern edge gets a little bit of a run in, doesn't it? It gives it, it's just the way of the water. The way the water's moving. Uh, it's, it's no other benefit apart from the fact the way the water's moving, the way in which it's going back out into the ocean, it seems to be giving this southern crew a bit of a, a, bit of a start. So at this stage, we've got Coratini in the lead, two trick competitors and a City of Perth competitor. They've joined up now, so they're going to create a bit of wash. And this is where Coratini was a bit unlucky in that iron because she got out in front and then there was a party wave where they all popped up together. And these overhead shots are, are fantastic. If you get home and watch the replay on, on YouTube, just if you're a young swimmer, you can actually have a look at what's going on. And, and as a parent, to sort of see the carnage and the grief that goes on around these cans, it's wonderful vision that we are picking up from the Jones shots. Kyratini, though, from Northcott in the lead. City of Perth being squeezed out there by that trig sandwich in second, third and fourth as they approach the apex turning can. Trig in fifth as well. But it is Kyratini from the sea, from Northcott in the lead. Trigger's now moved into second and third. City of Perth hanging on for fourth, just on the left-hand side of screen. I think that might be Hannah Young. So Coratini continuing, but it is Trig Island, really. Uh, Eleanor Flowers, we spoke about the back end of her race, and here she goes. She is sidled up next to Coratini and stealing centimetres with every stroke that she takes. Eleanor Flowers now. Trig Island in third and fourth. Hannah Young from the city of Perth in fifth, but it is Coratini and Eleanor Flowers. Flowers maybe just getting a hand or so in front as they make their way back in towards this wave zone. 
again, Hayden, just some great racing from these young competitors. Yeah, so now it's stroke for stroke. These two looking at each other, they both breathe towards each other. So Eleanor Flowers breathes to her left, Corantini breathes to her right. So she can now see Eleanor Flowers just half a body to a third of a body in front. In behind her is Olivia Dotty, who's closing really strong, but they're right on this water's edge now, Mick. And look at the party wave out the back, ladies and gentlemen. Is someone going to go or are they going to wait? Oh, this will bring even the Sorrento competitor up if she can get onto it. No, she won't be able to get onto it. Oh, the girls from the back. Someone's waited. Here we go, Olivia Dotty waited. She can serve skills, but the girl in the front's going to be the one who's going to maximise it. Oh, on the northern edge, who's it going to be? Too close to call. Eleanor Flowers stumbles. Is up. Olivia Dotty, second, third. Hannah Young, maybe. Not really close to call. Kate Rigol, fourth or fifth. Caratini, what a swim by you, young lady. Two party waves in two races for her. and That can be surf. That's the difference, right? You can be sitting eighth or ninth and then all of a sudden get the wave that you want and then you're in. Yeah, we say... We say that surf, but it's it's one of the more frustrating things about it. It's uh, good luck for some of the ones that are in those back markers, but really disappointing for some of the leaders when they do all the hard work and they get swamped by a wave. But that was uh, some great surf skills on display. And we think it was Eleanor Flowers that managed to hang on. Hanny Young snuck. I'm not sure if he managed to get a medal. There's a couple of them running up the beach. Olivia Dotty, we just see the fight in her. She never gives up until she's crossed that line. We think she may have picked up a medal as well. We'll have to wait and see the results. But, uh, but great racing and a great finish. And as we've spoken about from the start of this day, these waves will have an impact in every single race this afternoon. you just got to hope you're in the right position when they come through. Exciting stuff. Plenty more still to come on Super Sunday under 17 male surf race then we're into the two opens the females and the males where the hewitts will be looking to me make a bit of history by becoming the first siblings to take out both those events they will go into these races as the favorites so marcus booth had a wonderful start in the iron and held it held it out I was successful in his under-17 iron, so he'll be one of the favourites here in, in this surf race. Brodie Lee also, Devin Prinslow, Tom Drevenman from the Fremantle Surf Life Saving Club, Donica Murphy. And out, of, out amongst the washing machine do they go. And Donica Murphy's off to a flyer at the moment. The Sorrento boy's there. Owen Barraclar, he's there. Marcus Booth is out now too. But look at this southern edge. Southern edge, Evan Prinslow, is out like a flash. The northern boys have got a... That's to the right of our screen, the northern edge. They're pushing hard also. So the Cottesloe boys, that'll be Christian Seidel. He'll get across if he can. But he doesn't need to come too far because he's got the best line to the can and if he just hangs in there now, he'll be sweet. He doesn't need to go anywhere else apart from forward at the moment. As they are, they'll join, they'll create that arrowhead. Young men of Australia, Marcus Booth, Evan Prinslow, Christian Seidel, there we go. That's the three at the moment. Donica Murphy getting squeezed in the middle there. A couple of Cottesloe caps, is unreal to see. So both Cottesloe boys right up in the hunt there. And just there, Eleanor Flowers, Olivia Dotty and... Anika Negus. They are one, two, three. That party wave at the end. But around they go. So out in front at the moment is Yevon Prinslow. Had a good under 19 swim as well, but here, here he is in the under 17. The two, North, the two Cottesloe boys, Mullaloo, Mullaloo, Trig Island, and that's your first seven or eight swimmers. So a bit of work to be done for all the other clubs if they're gonna get their numbers up there. So either Thomas Drevenman or Yevon Prinslow.
So Tom Dreverman, a, re a body length out in front of the man. Sammy Hicks from Cottesloe, he's absolutely flying in behind there also. Love getting a bit of advice from the crowd. It's wonderful to hear. So thanks, oh young men, for coming up to let us know. <laughs> Especially when they're already those people that we're talking about. And so here we go. Tom Dreverman opens up the lead. He had a great swim yesterday for Fremantle in the under-19 under 19 surf team. So Frio out in front. Sammy Hicks from Cottesloe in second place. Cottesloe in third place. Mullaloo, Brody Lee, he's in fourth place. Donica Murphy in fifth place at the moment. Sixth place is Trig Island. So really tight racing here at the front. And the good thing about this is that Tom Dreverman started on the southern edge, so he's in the lead at the moment. And Sammy Hicks started on the northern edge, so the benefit is there for all of them to take. So this will be a wonderful win for this young man. There's no party wave coming at the moment. It looks like he may take this out, Tommy Dreverman. Small wave building, though, wouldn't you read about it, Mick? This is not what we wanted for him today. For the others, it might be not, but this could put the glasses down if Tommy Dreverman gets over the top of this one, and he does. And the young man from Fremantle in the blue and gold, he'll add to that gold by putting gold around his chest because he is our under-17 male surf race champion. Yeah, great race. Brody Lee sneaking home to pick up the silver. Sammy Hicks there for the bronze, but Tom Drevenham from Fremantle, a great swim. Lockie Beam there in sixth. The rest of the competitors coming across the line. City of Perth, Mullaloo, Serrano, City of Bunbury as well. But one, two, three, Drevenham, terrific race by him. And then the next one on the line is the open female surf race event. So another really good field, Eleanor Flowers. She'll be well warmed up by now. Sophie Baron Hay as well, looking to go the double after just taking out the under 19 female surf race. Daisy Hewitt, probably the early favorite going to this race. She's had an outstanding season. Went away as with the surf league, raced extremely well over on the East Coast and been one of the dominant swimmers throughout the domestic competition here in Western Australia. Eleanor Flowers closer to the screen, safe Baron Hay next to her. Set for start and we are away in the open female surf race. And it looks like Mullaloo, Daisy Hewitt in the middle of that field. She got a fairly clean start as well, so she will take the early lead. It's going to be catch me if you can. That's that challenge Daisy Hewitt has thrown out to these other competitors. Sophie Baron Hay just trying to get herself across. She'll try and sit on the feet. A Daisy Hewitt, but at the moment, as you can see, Daisy Hewitt in the lead. The pointy end of the arrowhead, Sophie Baron Hay right on her toes as well. Trig Island there, and City of Perth. But it's Daisy Hewitt in the lead, then there is four across for second, and then five across in the line of third. So very tight swimming. But Daisy Hewitt at the moment in clear water. That's where she wants to be. She loves to lead these races from the front. Won the under-19 last year. Looking to go the next step up and take out the gold in the open event here this afternoon. So it's City of Perth 1-2, Trig Island in third.
With a bit of argy bargy at the cans and the Trig Island competitor just pushing Sophie Baron Hay just slightly north. In fact, it might be Sophie Lloyd, we think that is, from Trig Island. Swimming next there, eye to eye with Sophie Baron Hay. They're both breathing towards each other as, as they turn this can. This time, Baron Hay gets the better line and pushes Baron Sophie Lloyd, but Sophie Lloyd says, no, not on my beach. So this is great racing for second and third. Daisy Hilt's got about a body length in the lead at the moment. She's in comfortable clear water, not having to put up with any of this rubbish that goes on at the cans. She turns the orange can. They need to head to the green and white. We saw a bit of an error in the earlier races, but these senior competitors, they know where they're heading. And Daisy Hewitt pulling away now. That rubber band is being stretched. Daisy Hewitt clearing out, turns the final can, heads for home. Sophie Lloyd battling along with Sophie Baron Hay. Another trick competitor has also come into the mix to the medals. Eleanor Flowers, that'll be. We've talked about her back end, and here she goes. Has she given Daisy Hewitt too much of a lead? I think she might have. These two have battled it out over the years. Daisy Yield in the lead. Eleanor Flowers in second place. Sophie Baron Hay and Sophie Lloyd from Trig Island there battling for that minor medal at the moment. And here comes the city of Bunbury storming home, trying to get herself in amongst the medals. The wonderful overhead shots here. It is Daisy Hood from the city of Perth. Eleanor Flowers from Trig Island. City of Bunbury have made their way up into third. Sophie Baron Hay from the City of Perth in fourth. Sophie Lloyd from Trig Island in fifth. Getting towards the wave zone. Here they come. Can Daisy Hewitt hang on? Wave starting to build out the back. It might sit up right for Hewitt. Will it give her a lift? It'll give her a bit of a lift, but not enough. So they continue to swim. Not a whole lot coming for the back markers. Daisy Hewitt in the lead. Eleanor Flowers chasing hard. City of Bunbury as well. But it's Hewitt in the lead. Wave coming. Can Hewitt pick it up? It's going to sit for her. If she can, it'll be all hers. Yes, she does. So a great race from Daisy Hewitt. Led from start to finish. Picks the wave up. That's the reward for being in the lead. So it'll be Daisy Hewitt, open female surf race champion. Eleanor Flowers will pick up the silver medal. And Emma Warburton from City of Bunbury in third. Sophie Baron Hay in fourth from the City of Perth. Sophie Lloyd there from Trig Island being chased by, it looks like Gracie Young. But congratulations, Daisy Hewitt. Under 19 gold medalist last year, open female gold medalist this year. With Eleanor Flowers picking up the silver and City of Bunbury in third. Daisy, fantastic race. Slept from the start and the finish, but still that little bit of wave over your left shoulder. Thought you'd look over, but rode that well as well. Yeah, thanks so much. I was practicing a bit of wave catching in my board race, so felt like I was pretty confident in catching that wave in today. And just over the shoulder too. If you had missed it, there might have been a chance you might have got silver rather than gold. So very well executed, and the training's obviously come off. Well done. Yeah, thank you so much. I didn't want it to come to a run up the beach. But I knew if it came to that, I would definitely get those legs and arms pumping. Fantastic. Cheers. Daisy Hewitt, open female surf race winner. Congratulations. Great win. Yeah, great, great story that is. So as we can see, a bit of swell building today throughout the day. Thank you, Cam, and congratulations, Daisy. 
But out in the water at the moment, Matt Collis is off to a flyer. He is absolutely mo motoring out there. He's being chased heavily by Trig Island, which will be Max Hunter and Charlie Hewitt. So can the Hewitts do the first time ever where they brother and sister win the Open medals for Surf, to, surf Swim, the Open gold medals? But Matt Collis out in front, absolutely flying. Same with Max Hunter. Max Hunter's just sitting in behind. Letting Matt Collis do his thing, do his business. But we know that the person usually being first of the candidates usually won the swim. So let's see how we go. Matt Collis around the green and white first. There, Max Hunter in second place, swimming exceptionally strong. Look for these two guys also in the open iron when we come up to it. Max, Charlie Hewitt, Jake Smith in fourth, fifth. Harry, Harry Hewitt in sixth position at the moment. Outside of them, Fremantle. So they're your top six or seven competitors at the moment with Matt Collis getting a really nice, good length. He's got clear water. So Charlie Hewitt needs to get across now. I think what we've got now is a race in two or three people, to be honest. I'm not sure anyone's going to catch Matt from here. I know he's been doing a lot of work. He's loving the pool at the moment. And he is motoring. Look at that big kick. Charlie Hewitt now onto his feet. And the nervous energy in the commentary box is just starting to build, as we can see now. Matt Collis goes around that final can. Fremantle now pushed up into third place. Wonderful to see them racing really well on a Super Sunday of finals. Jake Smith with a bit of work to do here. Same with Max Hunter. So Matt Collis one, Charlie Hewitt two. Fremantle in three, and then Trigg, then Trigg. So Tommy Dreverman's backing up here, looking exceptionally strong. And he's, I reckon he might swim these boys down at the moment. It's getting pretty tight. We know Matt Collis and Chucky Hewitt's surf skills are right there because they're at a beach where the waves break right on the sand. Not much happening for them at the moment, and I can't see much happening from them out the back at this stage. So Matt Collis in the lead. Charlie Hewitt pulling alongside him. This is a race in two. Hands on heads here at the moment. We're not sure. Hardy wave out the back. Will Drevman get onto this one? We're not sure. Here comes the moment. Matt Collis. Charlie Hewitt. Matt Collis. Matt Collis just gets a little lift, but Charlie's up. Matty's a great waiter. He knows how to race. Oh, he dives early. Got a bit of momentum, but he'll be our winner. Gold medal. Open male surf race. Little bit of a flex. Ooh, Ben Jones maybe got bitten, beaten on the line there by Tommy Dreverman. I'm not sure. Second place, Charlie Hewitt. Jake Smith. Patrick Ealy, great swim there. Ben Snook, awesome swim. Yeah, really great racing. Um, you know, Matt Collis, he, he gets across that bank very well. Chucky Hewitt just swam, swam really smart, got on Matt's feet. Tommy Drevin and then loomed up from nowhere. Great finish from Tommy Drevin. And, and then that little bit of a wave with, uh, with Matt and Chucky. Chucky almost came right up alongside Matt. They would do a lot of training together. It's a great squad they've got down at the city of Perth. And terrific for them to go 1-2. Matt Collis taking out the open male surf race. Chucky Hewitt in second. Tommy Drevin in there from... Fremantle in third. So City going 1-2, taking out the double in the open male and the open female surf race. They took out the gold medal in the team's event as well. So it's a, a very strong swimming club down there at the City of Perth. But well done to Matt Collis, Chucky Hewitt and Tommy Drevin. And they're going 1-2-3 in the open male surf race. Cam might be down there with Matt. We'll see if we can... Get a quick word from him if he is. Cam, over to you. <laughs> Mick, bit of nervous energy in the commentary box, mate, but your son, fantastic swimmer. He's a gold medal. Matty, well done. Cheers, mate. That was a tough race, but yeah, glad I could get it done. It's just a little bit of a bubble in that wave over your left shoulder. You just got it in the end, but you could see over your shoulder your teammate was right up your clacker. 
Yeah, I breathed on my left, so luckily I could see it was there. It gave me a bit of motivation. And when I felt that little lift, I knew I just had to go. Otherwise, I knew it was coming for me. Well done, Matty Coles. Good to see someone's got a bit of Billy in the family. Mick, your son, superstar. Here's the gold medalist in the open mile, surf race. Yeah, well done, Cheers, Cam. Well done to Matt Collis, too. Fantastic result. Great support from the club down there. And a great result for the city of Perth. And on the line, we move in to the Ferraris of the ocean. The skis under 17 female single ski. That'll be followed by the under 17 male. And then the open female and open male single ski races. These are electrifying. It is all about getting off the start. You want to get that clean water. We saw in the semi-final of the Open Man how many competitors got squashed at the can. You want to get away clean. You want to get away early. Under 17 female ski final about to get underway in Water Arena 2. Flying through the program this morning on Super Sunday. It's been a great day of racing so far. Plenty more still to come. After the skis, we've got the boards, then the iron, and then the Taplin relays. All finals on Super Sunday. Plenty more to come. And here's the start list. Lockley, Cockhurst, Elderfield, Kearns, Flanagan, Borden, Chin, Negus, Hawks, and Zoe Moore from Trig Island. Caratini, Marla Stewart from the city of Perth. Picked up a bronze medal yesterday. Beth Bamforth, Hannah Young, Olivia Doddy, and Grace Atchison. This is the future of ski paddling in WA Surf Life Saving. These girls, first year ski paddlers. They've put in a big off season, had a few races under their belts, and here they are now lining up for a shot at a gold medal. In the under 17 female single ski. This is the SunSmart WA Surf Life Saving Championships coming to you live from Scarborough Beach. Nice to have you with us wherever you may be watching, either on the beach or at home on the live stream. And again, a big thank you to our event partner, Healthway, providing that SunSmart message. Just a reminder to be smart, smart throughout the day. Slip, slop, slap, seek and slide. Today's UV Max will again be, it'll be in double figures. If it's above three, you need to make sure you are sun smart. We'll hit double figures today. So make sure you do look after yourself. Keep yourself hydrated as well. There's a bit of a breeze. It's not as hot, but that UV will still be as high. So the under-17 female single ski final on the line. Little tricky shore break here for the ladies to navigate and within the starter also, making sure where possible everyone can get a fair start. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Our young ladies, some of these girls are 15 years of age at the moment in this 17s, being a first year of 17s. And start his hands. A few of the girls picked their skis up. I, this morning I saw it being held up for quite a while over east, so this is going to be no different. Clear start, and away they go. Anakin Negus off very well. Same with the girls in the middle. Zoe Moore 
So the kayak specialist, she's out and about. But Harriet Chin, let me tell you, this is the one she's been waiting for. She is flying and got clear water out in front. And you can see she's already put a nose forward. Cottesloe next to her at the moment too, which is unreal to see. So Tara Kearns, Flanagan, she'll be our early leader. Harriet Chin pushing up inside the line, line her. Zoe Moore's got the inline, inside line to the can. She is on that stripe purple and blue and white ski. To the middle of our screen is Harriet Chin and to the left of our screen is Tara Kearns Flanagan from Cottesloe Surf Life Saving Club. So these are your first four, three or four competitors. Just a couple of the competitors coming together, which always stunts a little bit of momentum. Whereas Tara Kearns Flanagan, she's had clear water all the way out. Harriet Chin now getting kind of swamped by a few of the girls. So Anna Lockley's pushing up from the city of Bunbury Club. So just like that, Harriet Chin goes from first to fourth as they head towards the can. They're just going to settle themselves in here. Harriet's getting a good line at the can. Fair paddle out there today. So Zoe Moore one, Tara Kearns Flanagan two from Cottesloe, Harriet Chin three, Anna Lockley four. So Trig Island, Cottesloe, Sorrento and City of Bunbury, they're your first four competitors. They'll get first choice of the can they'll get first choice of the runs as they come round. So here we go. Little lift that comes there for Zara Zara. Zara Kearns Flanagan. Sorry, Tara Kearns Flanagan. Zoe Moore also lifting well here. Harriet Chin, now she'll look for the run. So the medals are going to come from these three girls, par barring a party wave at the end. So they're going to tack and jive here, but they'll make sure they cover each other off. An interesting thing, Hayden, we've seen the, the wave in the swim. These young girls, if a wave does jack up, have they got the skills to control that wave coming in? So this is the sort of race where someone coming 10th could actually win this race. Yes, because you must be in control of your ski when you cross the black and white flag. You can't just float through and not be in control of it. So Zoe Moore, she angles a little line in. Same with the girls at the back. Zoe Moore now putting a length on Tara Kern Flanagan. So here we go. This will be the take and go. Or will you get on the bus? There's a little wave building out the back. This will give a lift here. Here we go. This is... This could be anyone's race if they paddle hard enough to get down it. Zoe Moore, you are going to be our under-17 female ski champion gold medalist. Zoe Moore, what a wonderful result that is for you. The race on for second. Harriet Chin might just hold there. Anna Lockley coming through. Oh, and Anna Lockley, she'll pick up the bronze. Harriet Chin, silver, but take nothing away from Zoe Moore. What a wonderful gold medal that is for that young lady. Oh, here's some oh, Such great surf skills coming through from these ladies. Bit of T-bone action there. Hopefully one of the uh, judges is okay. And then more importantly, the competitor. Yeah, great calling, Hayden. And a great result. So a big thank you to all the, the judges and the volunteers that are here today. One just got taken out by a ski on the flag. So I hope she's okay. Those skis are about 18 kilos, 20-odd foot long. So they're dangerous bits of craft in the water when they get swung sideways as they just did then. So a big shout-out to all the volunteers, all the officials that are helping out today. Without them, these carnivals would not go ahead. On the line now, the under-17 male single ski. Owen Barraclough from Serrano. Probably the favourite heading in to this race. Tristan Osterwinter as well. Lockie Bean from Mullaloo. Marcus Booth from Serrano as well. Archie Ryan been paddling extremely well over the off-season. He's a bit of a smoky in this field. Tom Linehan as well from Sorrento. So a really good field. So Owen Barraclough there, he's got the...
black vest with the rashie over the top, the Serrano cap, the white fen with the red nose. If you can get away clean, it'll be very hard to catch. He gets on extremely well. That's a great start by Barraclough. Blake Monaghan as well in the red wetsuit. And on the very far side, Blake Monaghan, that is... So Blake Monaghan from Trig Island getting away to an absolute flyer, as did Owen Barraclough. So the strength of these young men as they make their way out towards the Cairns. And it looks like Trig just slightly in front on that lifesaver coloured ski. The boss and Sorrento in second. So Trig one, Sorrento into Northcott in three. So Blake Monaghan, it is on the multicoloured boss. Barraclough, though, staying right with him. We'll wait and see who picks the better line. Monaghan has got the inside running. Barraclough not hassled by it too much, though. So one, two, three, Trig Island, Sorrento and North Cottesloe. Now Barraclough starts to make his move on the outside. Barraclough pins the ears back, gets the rating up. Now he settles back down. This is where it's going to... Oh, now Barraclough picks up a bit of a run, heads a bit north, but he pulls some distance. Now he needs to try and pull it back, steer his way back in. Monaghan's there as well. So it's going to be between Barraclough and Monaghan. And Notsky from... Northcott is there as well, just sidling up alongside Monaghan. Barraclough may have picked a, a good line coming around on that ski. Just milking some runs. He's actually gone off screen for the people watching at home. On the right-hand side of screen, now he can pick him up here. It's really tight. Monaghan against Barraclough. Notsky now from Northcott. He's in the lead. Or is Barraclough? That's neck and neck between these two. They need a wave. Here comes Notsky. He might have something underneath him. Barraclough as well. Notsky, I think it might be from Northcott. Barraclough's on a bit of a run. What can they do? They're going to have to try and out paddle it. Notsky now, he pins the ears back, lifts the rating. They've got to finish between the sticks. He just sneaks in, so it's going to be Notsky from Northcott. Barraclough from Sereno, not happy, throws the paddle away. And Monaghan from Trig Island in third. But great paddling there from Northcott. Stuck with the leaders, and when the time came, he pounced, and he's got a gold medal to show for it. It's a gold medal, so I just think there, that little finish, I reckon, Notsky actually paddle over the top. Just give us a thumbs up if it's uh, one of the Notsky boys. No, it's not. So we'll get that call right. Could be Charlie Davis, but I don't think it's Charlie. Connor Jacob, maybe. Is it Connor Jacob? There we go, Connor. Sorry, mate. Only went through the four names on the list. So Connor Jacob, what a paddle that was from him. Didn't give up. Motored off the turn. Barraclough just sat back as we got into the wave area and just kind of caught on the wave where Connor kept paddling. And guess what? It doubled up and then Connor got the lift. So that was that, was that little moment that happened. And that's racing, under 17s. That's his first year in under 17s. But Aaron Barraclough, he's, he's a man of the future for sure. And yeah, he'll be disappointed with that. But... Take nothing away from Connor Jacob. Congratulations, our 2024 under-17 male ski champion. And apologies to Mr. and Mrs. Jacobs. That's a terrific paddle there by your young son, gold medalist. On the line, the open female single ski. This will be a beauty. Males to follow. And again, just some great talent. Keris Humble there on that pink ski. All the experience of her. Jamie Roberts on that black, white and grey ski. Oh, the starter needs to take the time. Hands up from Roberts. She's not, no one wants to go with that wall of water coming towards them. So I think she's pretty right. Jazz Shipway car next to 
Keris Humble third from the end. Ash Booker fourth from the end. So look for that southern side with Humble, Jazz Shipway Carr and Ash Booker. Fem Kanegas there as well. Tash Lever such as well from Cottesloe. Great field. Any number of people. Pagewood in the middle. As we mentioned, Jamie Roberts as we head down towards that northern end. Looks like we're clear. Hand up by Shipway Carr. She's not happy. So just Shipway Carr gesturing would be the word I would use to the judges. The Serena competitor on that northern end is creeping forward and Shipway Carr's not happy with it. She's about a ski length in front. Although it's pretty even on the TV screen, Jazz Shipway Carr. But that's one of the rights of the paddlers. Something the men will also be doing if they're not happy. The arm goes up. So a tricky little break. Tricky for the starters to make it even. Sarah Major as well there from North Cot. There's the start. They're on clean and they are away. Paige Wood certainly got the best of the starts. So Paige Wood away. Jazz Shipway Carr as well. Jamie Roberts on that stripe skis we've spoken about. So they're your top three. Paige Wood, Jazz Shipway Carr and Jamie Roberts as they head out towards the first of the turning cans. So these two will come together. They train all week. Pushing through in the middle, there's Fem Kanegas. So Pagewood off to a fly here. Wonderful to see her on that stripe, candy stripe ski there. Just to the left of her on your screen at the moment is Jazz Shipway Car. Fem Kanegas just puts a nose, puts the race one nose right where it can't go. So that'll give the benefit here to Jamie Roberts. So Jamie Roberts is pushing hard on that inside. She wants to hold that inside line. She believes she's going to have the right of way. And if she gets that right of way, she'll take some catching. So at the moment, in front, we have Jazz Shipway Carr. Keris Humble just moves in, makes it a bit tighter on one of the trick competitors on each other. Then Paige Wood just gets a little check. So here we go. We're going to go around these, uh, exciting these cans. But these girls are actually making it hard for each other by trying to connect each other before they get around the can. But Jazz Shipway Carr, she's got that great lead. She's a length in front now. And let's see what happens here. I reckon these girls will get caught up in the middle here. Jazz Shipway Carr puts a big hammer down and puts a turn down on the inside of that line there. And she's out and about now for sure. So Jazz Shipway Carr takes Jamie Roberts around the can, gets a little lift straight away and looks how she's milked that run. But the, the girls behind shouldn't panic. There's three green caps. Three green caps coming now for the uh, mighty Sorrento. Tar, but they're chasing down the green, red and white of Jazz Shipway Carr. Yeah, and really composed paddling there by Ash Booker. She stayed on the outside of all that carnage. The overhead shot showed it. Keris Humble got stuck up there with, uh, with, with Negus. Jazz Booker stayed on the outside. She's got herself up into third place at the moment. So Shipway Car puts a hammer down, but here comes the Olympian. Once an Olympian, always an Olympian. Jamie Roberts, she does not want to see Jazz Shipway Car. She is a wonderful ocean paddler, Jazz Shipway Car. There's nothing flat about her skills in the, in, the, in the wild ocean. She is an absolute marauder. They call her the Viking of the North. There's no way when you've got a hyphenated surname that you can't be a Vi Viking. And she's absolutely flying at the moment. Jazz Shipway Car has streaked this field, ladies and gentlemen. She's picked up a run, and that will be glasses down. You can claim that one right from there, young lady, because you are going to be the Open Female Ski Champion of Western Australia for 2024. And wouldn't you read about it, here comes a party wave out the back for the three Sorrento girls. Ash Booker pushing through in the middle here. Paige Wood coming also. Ash Booker, Jamie Roberts, Deadwater on the line, Harriet Chin. Hard to see, hard to call. Paige Wood, a great paddle. Keris Humble coming in now. And this is where a bit of carnage happens there. A bit of barrel roll there from one of the trick competitors. Making a safe entrance, but really good paddling.
So just off screen, under 14, Iron Woman final. Delta Cross from Northcott in the lead. Cottesloe second. City of Perth third. But on the start line, it is an ego of ski paddlers waiting for a start. The open male ski final. This is going to be an absolute beauty. Jack Reddy. Dan Humble, Ethan Jackson, Brendan Sarson, Kai Marketo, Stephen Bird, Josh Windsor, Rhys Baker, Harry Hewitt, Charlie Hewitt. That's just some of the names. There are more to come. Michael Booth, Kieran Peters, Ed Host. We see how quickly he can get away. Patrick Eli, Kent Jenkinson's been having an outstanding summer. Adam Bloomfield and James Duncan. Some quality paddlers missing out and nothing but quality making this final here this afternoon. It's all about the start. We know how well some of these can get away. Jack Reddy, one of the great starters. He's on the southern side, so he's got some clean water. Dan Hubble next to him. Ethan Jackson, again, a tremendous starter. He's got this unique double-footed jump. And when he nails it, he's always the first off the beach. Next to him is Brendan Sarson. Then Charlie Hewitt, Steve Bird. Oh, what a field. So Sarson, Bird, Humble, Baker in the middle there. Joshy Windsor's there. Patrick Ely, Michael Booth. This is the one they talk about at the club later on. No one listens, <laughs> but it's okay. It's the ego of skis we're about to watch. And a couple of young bloods in there also. So a wonderful opportunity for those guys to continue to learn, and you're never out of it. So if you've done the work like you, these guys all have, as I said, this could be an Aussie's final. There's no, there's no dramas with that. The best paddlers in Australia come from WA. And so if you make a final at the WA State Surf Life Saving Champs in the skis, you are one of the best paddlers. Hands up. Jack Reddy just says, no problem. Hang on a second, starter. Dan Humble pushes through the waves. And the thing about Dan, he'll try and start from there too. He's about a ski length in front. He'll be saying, yep, I'm happy out here. He's staying out there too. He's calling everyone out. They're all going out to Dan Humble. But this start is so important. You need to get away. If you miss the start, these competitors are just too fast. And it is a bridge too far to try and paddle them down. So you've got to get away clean. They all seem to do that pretty well. Stephen Bird gets on clean. Reese Baker as well. Mark Hedo got on clean. Harry Hewitt. Dan Humble. Brendan Sarston as well, Ed Host on that right-hand side. So a terrific race already underway. So here we go, Stephen Berg, clear water out in front. Josh Windsor just pushing in behind on that blue boss. Kai Marketo there, Dan Humble on the left of our screen and Reese Baker in the middle. So it's a race in three or four at the moment. Who's going to push across here? Ed Host definitely squeezing up. It's going to be tight. There's a bit of argy-bargy already. They've not even got to the, one of the, the second can. So they come out to this second can here. They'll go past that can, out to the black and whites on the horizon. And it's just important to sit in, stay out of the carnage, don't get caught. Who's going to get miss out on the inside line now? I'm not quite sure, but out in front at the moment, Stephen Bird and Daniel Humble, they'll go side by side. Reese Baker just to the right there, fourth, third or fourth place at the moment. Wonderful starting here. Ed Host is also there. So, Bird won. Cops one under the armpits just for a bit of love. No problem about that. I'm still here, he says, Reese Baker. The Baker, the Bird and the Humble, who will it be? In third place at the moment, we've got another Trig Island competitor. Pushing up hard in, inside that line too. Joshy Windsor. Oh, Dan just gets caught at the can. It opens the door. It's the bird and the baker race. That's where it's going to sit, ladies and gentlemen. I can't imagine anyone else is going to get there. Bird gets the lift. Oh, can he do the double? He did the double ski yesterday with his long-term pal, long time pal in Jesse Phillips. And he's just opened up a monster. What a run that was off the back of the can. Yeah, terrific skills there from Stephen Bird. It just lifted underneath him. He was able to go with it. So it is Stephen Bird in the lead at the moment from North Cottesloe. Reese Baker second. Dan Humble from Trig Island in third on that orange ski. But Stephen Bird, he's got about two or three lengths. But here comes Baker. Here comes Baker. Humble as well. Kent Jenkinson too from the outside. They're all coming. They're all on runs. Stephen Bird maintaining the lead. Reese Baker chasing, Humble chasing. At the moment, though, it is Stephen Bird. If he gets a bit of a lift from here, Patrick Eli storming home. Stephen Bird, though, I think he's going to have enough just to get him there. He will indeed. 
That's a tremendous victory by Stephen Bird. But the minor placings out the back. Reese Baker wants to paddle ahead of it. Here they all come now. Dan Humble's going to have to fight for third. Kent Jenkinson coming down the ramp. Reese Baker needs to hurry. Oh, third place is going to be way too cool. Oh, possibly Kent Jenkins might have just got that nose in front of Humble. We'll have to wait and see. But a comprehensive victory there by Stephen Bird from North Cottesloe. He turned that can. He put about a two or three scale lengths in front. And it was all his from there. Great racing, but a great victory for Steve Bird. And we'll get our man on the beach going down to these uh, Ego Skis for a bit of an interview when he gets some time. Cam Robbins. Wow. That was exciting racing. Anyone's race. Ed hosting our screens at the moment. Harry Hewitt, Joshy Windsor, Dan Humble, Stephen Bird, our winner, Kai Marchetto there. I think he might have got top 10. He'd be pretty happy with that if he did. Brendan Peters. Fucking jack of all trades, mate. But Stephen Bird, our winner. Bit of a claim. Arm in the air. We'll get him on the interview. So Stephen, give us a thumbs up, mate. How's that? That's a bit. That's a bit of a win for you there. Because I wonder how many of those he's actually won. Stephen Bird, he's um, he's got a, a an amazing resume of paddling, Olympic paddler, gold medal at Aussies, picked up the gold in the double yesterday. But it'd be interesting to find out from Cam how many of the state titles has Stephen Bird won as Ollie Brown just picks up the under-14 Ironman gold medal. Billy Hawks in second, comprehensive by those two. Daylight second, or Daylight will be third, and it's going to be one of the Sorrento paddlers. Tricky conditions, just managed to do well to keep the nose up. And as the board paddlers now, they start to make their way down to the start line in water arena number two. It'll be the under 17 female board race, then the males, then the open female, open male. Then we're into the iron and then the taplin. We'll try and spot Cam to see if we can get an interview with the great man Steve Bird. But on the line, the under 17 female board race. So they are away. Annie Kanegis in that pink board on this southern side. She gets away to a, a good clean start. Interesting tactic the girls use. Some pop over that. Some slid right to the back and waited for it to, to pass. But it will be Annie Kanegis from Trig Island will lead out the under-17 female board race final. Pretty spread out field at the moment from the overhead shots. They'll start to converge towards the point of that arrowhead. But at the moment, pretty wide. So Millie Cock on the northern side, she's just picked a really nice line and she is in the lead at the moment. Olivia Dotty, she's there as well with Annika Negus. There's four in second place, but Millie Cock it is. She will take this race to the cans, the chase pack behind her. And as we've seen, it all happens once you turn this can. Eleanor Flowers in there as well. So a line of four. So as they turn the can, it is Trig Island, Mullaloo. So Trig in first and second. Mullaloo sliding into third spot as they turn the can. Cottesloe in there as well. So tight racing. But it is Millie Cock in the lead.
So Millie Cock in first place, Olivia Doddy in second. Mullaloo in third, Negus in fourth from Trig Island. Little runs coming. Sienna Howard. Okay, closing stage is Millie Cox open up a two or three board length lead here now. Plenty of work to be done for the girls behind. Of course, of course, she's her first year. Her first year 17 is this young lady. She's been trying her, her heart out for the last 10 years in surf. And look at her go now. She's picked up a little run. Will she get over it? No, she won't. And guess who's hunting now? Sienna Howard. She has a lift. But no, I think Millie Cock will get this one. The Viking. She'll put that gold around her neck, ladies and gentlemen. She just needs to paddle over. Oh, she held back. Maybe I want to, uh, went too early, but she'll get this one now. And that'll be the run. That'll give her the gun and that gold medal. She hasn't panicked. Third place is going to be so close to call. Olivia Doddy, Annika Negus. But take nothing away from our winner, Millie Cock. So under 17 male board race final. And Sorrento out early along with Trig. Mullaloo's there as well. So two Sorrento competitors, Trig Island and Mullaloo, your top four. So Blake Monaghan from Trig Island is in the lead. So Blake Monaghan in one. He gets a little lift as they go around that can. Oh, look at the lift there from the race one. Just puts the board right where it shouldn't go. I love a little bit of gamesmanship. I love the racing that's coming on board today. So round we come. Blake Monaghan one. Second place at the moment, Sorrento. Third place is North Cottesloe. Sorry, Sorrento. So we've got two Sorrentos in second and third. And fourth, I reckon that is for now. Mullaloo pushing up now. So Donica Murphy gets to his knees on that famous red and gold board. But I reckon he's too far ahead. Here comes, here comes Blake Monaghan. He lifts as when the Sorrento competitor lift there also. So this race is on between these two competitors. Massive opportunity. Who's going to get gold? They're pushing each other. Here come the back markers. Murphy. Here also inside of him. So Tommy Linehan just needs to lift here. He needs to go with Blake Monaghan. Will this be Blake Monaghan's moment? He is trained so hard, just like all the other young men out there at the moment. And a party way out the back. So will, it, will he get on this? He will. Lose. Blake Monaghan, this is his moment. It just doesn't lift. Everyone's coming now. He's going to end up with everyone in his lap. The opportunity to take the gold. Oh, Sorrento lifting. Blake's lifting here. Ladies and gentlemen, will it be? No, it's not. The wave goes under him. That has left the door well ajar. Will Blake get up and run or will he wait? I reckon he'll wait. He's up. They're away. Here they come. But Blake Monaghan, this is your gold medal, young man. You are going to win. No, there is no one left. All right. Sorrento second. Could been congratulated there. And Tommy Linehan, he'll take out the bronze medal. And what a race that was. Yeah, terrific race. Blake Monaghan there, under 17 male board race champion. He was pretty happy with it too. Claimed it as he went across the line. Tristan Oosterwinter Tristan in second place. But uh, great to see his teammates getting around him. He's pretty uh, overcome by it all. It meant a lot to him.
And again, we spoke about the camaraderie of these competitors. We see it at all age groups. Everyone's really supportive of each other. They're happy for each other when they get a victory. And it's uh, one of the great things about Surf Life's having a great result for him. And I hope someone got a photo of him as he crossed that line because that's one memory that he would love to hang on to. Down on the line now, though, it is the Open Female Board Race Final of Western Australia. Terrace Humble, Sammy Brigden, Nikita Fredenay, Millie Cock, Annika Negus, Jazz Shipway Car, Beth Bamforth, Fem Negus, Georgia Moore, Sienna Howard. She's from Cottesloe. Olivia Dotty, she's had a big program. She's in good form. Zoe Moore, Ash Booker, Grace Young from the City of Perth, Kate Rigol from Cot, and Olivia Moore from Trig Island. That is your starting lineup. And again, it's just that mixture of youth and experience. The youth of someone like Annika Negus, the hunger of Dottie, the experience of Humble and Booker. Grace Young there as well. Remember the Western Suns team that went across to Maruba and raced. Annika Negus always got a smile. I think a relaxed Negus is a dangerous Negus. As they get the final briefing from the race referee, are you going to pick a winner? Yeah, I reckon Annika Negus um, has, got, has got something to prove here. It's been a, um, she's raced extremely well, and this would be one. She's racing against her older sister. Um, but I think the Viking will go do the daily double. I think she'll do the, the 17s, and she will do the open female board race. I see now how it's also paddling exceptionally well. Pushed her all the way in that last race. Keris Humble, no doubt. But for me, Nikita Fredenay, she's an uh, Aussie gold medalist in board relays. So there's plenty of pedigree here. And also, like, I, I, you can't really call her a smoky, but she's better known as a ski paddler. Jess Shipway Carr, a very, very good board paddler as well. And if she can get herself off to a good start, she's certainly going to be... Uh, up amongst the medals. So in the hands of the starter, looks pretty clean in front. On the line. Gold medal up for grabs, open female board race. Keris Humble closest to screen on that pink race one board. So we are away in the Open Female Board Race Final. And it looks like Trig Island, a couple of Trig Island competitors getting out, punching them by through that break. Olivia Dotty. So Annika Negus in the middle of the field, getting away cleanly. Harris Humble on the southern side. Jazz Shipway Car as well. Millie Cox in amongst the mix as well in the early stages of this race. Grace Young from the city of Perth also in amongst it. Nikita Fredenay as well. But as we head out towards the turning can, it looks like Annika Negus from Trig Island is in the lead. Keris Humble. Her teammate sitting right on that wash, right next to her. We'll wait and see how much carnage goes on at these turning cans. We've seen it all day long. We saw it yesterday. We've seen it today. We'll continue to see it. Both paddlers down on their stomachs to make a little bit more stable as they turn around the first of the cans. Negus setting the early pace. Humble quite content just to sit back. And there is Trigg. It's a one, two, three, four, five tree competitors filling up the first five places of this race. Negus gets around first. Humble in second. Millie Cock just on the inside. So it is Annika Negus. Keris Humble and Millie Cock, they are your top three, all from Trig.
All vying for gold. Jazz Shipway Car. She's chasing hard as well on the white ball with the black stripe. Looks like Nikita Fredene there from the city of Perth as well. Grace Young not out of the medals. As we can see, anything can happen as they start to come into this wave zone. Now the runs start to lift. Annie Kanegas. Keris Humble picks one up as well. Millie Cock as well. Race not over. It's three in the moment. Millie seems to have just pushed to the lead. This would be a great victory for her if she can hang on. Negus digs deep. Humble never gives up. She's got all the experience and all the drive. She won't panic. It is Negus though. Millie Cock and Keris Humble. There you're one, two, three. Bit of a wave starting to come now for the back markers. Will they get it or won't they? Or will it just be the front three? It looks like Negus and Humble. Negus and Humble might pull over. Millie Cock chasing, but it's going to be between the two trick competitors. Negus and Humble for one and two. Millie Cock looks like she's got three. Humble might have actually got ahead here. Gets to her feet first. Keris Humble. Negus. Humble. Negus might win the sprint at the beach. And yes, she does. Great racing. Annika Negus taking the gold medal just ahead of Keris Humble. And Millie Cock in third place. Trig one, two, three. Olivia Dotty in fourth. So it's been an absolute clean sweep by Trig Island. But great racing. Keris Humble winding back the clock. But Annika Negus gold medal in the open female board race. Well, wow, great call, Mick. One, wonderful call and Annika Negus I said she's got something to prove and uh, she didn't let us down there she didn't panic too when Keris paddled down that way she knew that the water was moving up behind her and so she was also going to benefit from that but what a race that was and now some speed machines we can see Ken Jenkinson Andrew Mosell Blake Allsop from Sorrento, Matthew Collis, Charlie Hewitt, Lucas Walker from Trig Island, Ethan Jackson, Brendan Naylor, Jackson Bloom, City of Perth, Callum Parsons, AJ from Trig Island, Patrick Ely, Sorrento, Max Hunter will go over the page now. Also Trig Island, Kai Marchetto, Jules Fredney, Kelton Mulvey, Joel Dotty, Matthew Collis, as we said earlier, and Charlie Hewitt. I do like the start here of Andrew Mosell. Will he wind back the clock? He's going to get turboed out with Blake Allsop. The trick here is not to get caught up in the middle. Fredene and Marchetto next to each other. So some of the young guns coming through. Opportunity here. Matt Collis on that northern edge. He's got a bit of work to do to get across. He's a fast starter. And they're away. Across the bank they go. Marchetto's on his board quickly. But look at the, sk look at the lean there of... Allsop, he's absolutely gone and gone fast. So Kelton Mulvey, they get a little bit of help going out, don't they, Mick, there? That was one of those great moments where they got the help going out, but Allsop will push to the lead. He'll create the arrowhead. You know what's good? Andrew Mosell stayed by himself. He's going to stay out of the water, and when they look left, they'll see him in front because whilst they've powered out with their fast arms, Mosell's not going to get caught up in any of the stuff that is going to create any issues for him going forward. But it's a really tight race at the moment. In the middle, we've got Matt Collis. He's leading. He's on that orange and blue board. Just in behind him is Kelly Mulvey. I reckon that is from Trig Island. Just behind that, those competitors now at this stage is the other Trig Island competitors. Serena, I've got to pop up somewhere. I'm just trying to find where their hat's in at the moment. Brendan Naylor on the blue board. Blake Allsop just in front of everyone. And Patrick Ealy there also. Yeah, so great start. So Matty Collis it will be to lead this uh, around this first turning can. We think that's Kelton Mulvey there from uh, Trig Island on the blue board just behind Matt. So Jules Frenet up there again as well. It's hard to see a lot of trick competitors. So Joel Dotty, so it's Matt Collis. So Matty Collis from the city of Perth. Kelton Mulvey from Trig Island there in second. Jules Frenet there third. Joel Dotty in fourth. Andrew Mosell there coming around the outside as well. Then Maxi Hunter, the wriggler, is there. Paddy Eli in the Sereno cap. Kai Makato in amongst it as well. So now it's Matt Collis and Joel and Kelton Mulvey. Two good mates. Here comes Jules Fredenay, trying to milk a bit of a run. He can work the ocean so well. At the moment, it is Matt Collis from the city of Perth and Kelton Mulvey from Trig Island. One of the best-looking men on the beach can also paddle aboard. Matty picks up a bit of a run. Jules Fredenay on the right-hand side of the screen. You can start to see him coming. It's Collis. It's the city of Perth, Trig Island, city of Perth, a 1-2-3 at the moment. Little bit of lift now maybe coming for Matt. Needs to keep on going. 
Oh, wave, 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 wave out the back. Kelton Mulvey picks up the run now. Matt Collis needs to keep working hard. Wade coming out the back. Looks like Paddy Eli. Paddy Eli from Sereno. Can he pull down it? He needs to pull down it. Or will Matt Collis? If Matt can hang it, it's his race. He needs to hold this board, get the nose up. Matty Collis, he's going to go the double. He's going to take out the swim and the board. A great race from Matt. Jules Frenene storming down on that outside lane. Paddy Eli's had to jump off and wait for the wave. But Matt Collis will coast up and take out the open male board race final. Jules Frenene and Paddy Eli, the sprinters on. Who's going to get there between the two of them? Oh, too hard to call. It might have just been Paddy Eli. But oh, exciting racing and a, a great result for Matty Collis to go back to back take out the swim and the board as well. It's been a good day for him. It's been a long time between drinks for Matt to win that gold medal. He won his first one as an 18-year-old and it's taken him five years to pick up another. But a, a great race from him. He led from start to finish, got the best of those runs coming around the cans and a terrific result there. Great race by Kelly Mulvey. Yeah, amazing race by Kelly Mulvey. But Matt Collis, wow. Put the hammer down, start. That was it. Done. He's had one of those days so far today. So looking forward to going into the iron and see how he prevails in that space, given the swim. Swim is first. So, wow, Mick, this is going to be... It's such a super Sunday of racing. You've just seen the speed machines go hard at it on their boards. We're now going to see the under-15 iron woman and iron man... I believe they're moving those through to Water Arena number two, or maybe not. Maybe they're just... We've got the Cameron relays, it looks like, on the line. So we'll get confirmation on what we're going to show next, ladies and gentlemen. But this is the wonderful SunSmart Surf Life Saving WA 2024 State Championships here at the home of Surf Life Saving in WA, Scarborough Beach. Action-packed racing, a little bit of swell, which is always good to see, making a difference in some of the races. So the unpredictability of it all... Don't forget to slip, slop, slap, seek and slide. That's the Sun Smart message. Our proud partners who give us the opportunity. And we'll go down to Cam Robbins and see if we can get one of the interviews. With our winner, Matthew Collis. So Matthew Collis, our open male surf champion and now our open male board champion and what a carnival he's had so far. But we'll get Matty Collis on the microphone and Cam, tell us the story of the race. Matty, well done, mate. What else are you going to compete, mate? you have uh, winning everything at the moment, mate. How'd you find that? Yeah, it was tough. I was lucky to get away nicely on the ride and I think there was a bit of a mess up at the can, so I got home pretty easily, which is good. I only one more for you, mate? Yeah, the iron and the tackling, so hopefully I can continue the success for the rest of the day. Uh, well done, mate. You're just making everyone proud and your family proud and the City of Surf Life Saving proud, mate. Well done. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Just a, re a reminder, everyone, that the Sun Smart message that today's max UV is nine, which is high. So make sure you are covered up. Don't forget to reapply sunscreen; so important. And follow the five Sun Smart tips: slip, slop, slap, seek, and slide. And download the UV app. 
myuv.com.au for UV forecast. There's also the SunSmart app, but being SunSmart is simple and effective, and it's a good way to reduce your developing skin cancer. So we've just got a lull at the moment. We've got some Cameron relays happening in Water Arena number one as we see the finish arch of what is a Super Sunday of finals here for the SunSmart State Championships of Western Australia. Of course, SunSmart, a long-term long partner of Surf Life Saving WA. We have so many great events still to come today, which is the under-15 irons, the open irons, the Cameron relays, and the three-person and six-person female and male taplin relays. So plenty of opportunity still to put some colour around your neck or just race as hardy as you can, but exciting racing here at the moment, particularly the Cameron relay, that the youth Cameron relay that's happening These are the semi-finals in Water Arena number one. But the next race should be the under-15 iron, but we'll just check that because they're probably in the camera relays at the moment and we need to hold until these are finalised. And so, yes, these are semi-finals of the camera relay, so it is a swim board. They'll tag to a runner, so four-person a camera relay, the female, this is youth. They'll tag their board paddle. The board paddle will go around the cans, head back in. And as you can see, there's a, a tricky shorey at the moment. So these young ladies have got to navigate that as they go out. So I would imagine the first eight through to the final, which will happen just before the Taplin relays this afternoon. But the way we're going through the program today, wow, we are, we are blitzing through, which is unreal news. So Trig Island chasing hard here. They're in third place. So top eight through, we would imagine, in what will be an enthralling youth Cameron relay. And what we might give, just whilst we're watching these semi-finals of the youth Cameron relay, is a points update. So this is points update for the weekend. So currently for the weekend only in the youth open youth and open standings for the 2024 championships. In fifth place at the moment, 115 points is Mullaloo. City of Perth on 214 points. Two points behind North Cot on 216. In second place for the weekend this so far is Sorrento on 353 points. And in the lead is Trig Island on 480 points. Uh, if we go to the championship... And we'll see now the top five clubs are Mullaloo. This is for all life-saving surf rescue, beach, surf boats and surf carnival this weekend. We'll see Mullaloo in fifth place at the moment on 287 points. North Cottesloe on 364 points. City of Perth on 367 points, so three points in between. There's been a change at the lead at the moment with Sorrento on 773 points and Trig Island on 819 points. As we enter the closing stages, and so Trig Island's had a really good paddle there. And they'll take out the first semi-final. Top eight through, this is the place. The battle, the battle is on. Sorrento and North Cot. There you're one, two, three.
So, correction, that wasn't a semi-final. That was the youth female Cameron Relay final. Trig Island, Sorrento and North Cottesloe taking out the first three positions. I think Sorrento might have got the silver with North Cot getting the bronze. But Trig Island taking out gold. So, they paddled from third place into first. And a great win. So, on our screens now, we have the youth male Cameron Relay final. Up and coming races. So look for Sorrento, look for North Cot, look for Cottesloe, Mullaloo also. And then Trig Island will have some teams in this. City of Bunbury, great to see City of Bunbury. Give us a wave, young man. So in the water at the moment, we have the youth, theme, youth male Cameron Relay final. And North Cot are out to a flyer here. They want to get away to a good start with Ollie Brown swimming from Trig Island, who's taken all before him today. But Ollie in the 14s, no doubt. But when he's up against the 15-year-old big dogs, it's a bit of a different story, Mick. Yeah, you're right. But just, you know, these, these guys, they race above their age. It's a, they, we talk about if you're, if you're old enough, you're good enough. Well, if you're good enough, you're old enough. And that's the case with a lot of these young young players, these young racers. They're experienced. I mean, they train with senior athletes. So when you get in the water, they're feeling quite at home. But here in this youth male Cameron Relay, it's like North Cottesloe leading out to the Cairns. Trig Island there in second. It looks like it might be the city of Perth in third. As I look through the Bushnell legends, It is Northcott in the lead, Trig Island in second, City of Perth in third, and Sorrento in fourth. Further back then is North Cottesloe, Fremantle, and then Sorrento again. But in the lead, 
Northcott and Trigg. Trigg just sidling up alongside Northcott. City of Perth racing smart, staying on the feet of the two competitors in front. But Northcott and Trigg Island. In fact, it's going to be Trigg Island, the first to turn the can in the opening swim leg of this youth male Cameron Relay. So as we said earlier, Ollie Brown, he is swimming the house down at the moment. So he's in the lead there for the Trigg Island Youth Cameron Relay final team. Being chased by Northcott and the ever-present young Ty O'Toole. He's having a cracking swim there. Got a big motor, just like his father, has a massive motor. But Ollie Brown, he is swimming so well at the moment. Or it could be Billy Hawks. We'll just work that out. I'll just see who's on the, who's the board paddler for the Trigg Island Surf Life Saving Club. But I think it's Ali Brown in the water. We'll get once I get closer to the uh, edge of the ocean, we'll be able to see either Ollie Brown or Billy Hawks in the water at the moment for Trig Island. F closely, Ty O'Toole just pushed in behind there. North Cottesloe there also. Trick is for these young young whippersnappers is not to go too deep, especially if the legs aren't long. So you've got to be careful. Party wave, and that'll bring them all back together. So Ollie Brown, he'll tag young Hudson. Hudson Hort, he's away. Oh, here we go. Here's the run, ladies and gentlemen. So Hudson Hort there, Northcott second, City of Perth third. Fourth place at the moment is Sorrento. They'll do the changeover. Billy Hawks in the water now for Trig Island. They're going to go paddle stroke for stroke. Northcott and Trig Island. Look at the matching pants too. The two little, two young men with their matching engine jammers they're looking very sharp there at the moment but they're racing their hearts out these two cracker boards one from north cotton one from trig island yeah great one of the thing we're not we're not seeing it on camera at the moment but is the the changeover and you hayden you spoke about these guys not going out too deep some are going out way too deep they're actually stopping their swimmer who are on a wave to tag them so then they've got to try and run through the wash but the enthusiasm of these young competitors when you can see that their desire to get the tag and the intensity when they run it's fantastic to see but out in the water it is trig island in the lead over northcott neck and neck in this opening or the final leg of the youth male cameron relay they'll come in on the boards and they'll tag the final runners it is trig island by half a boat length or a board length over North Cottesloe. City of Perth in third, Sorrento in fourth. That's where the medals are going to come from. It is Trig Island, Northcott, City of Perth and Sorrento. So Billy Hawks puts the hammer down here. He gets, he's getting chased here by the Northcott white team that's of emrys connell obi rogers alexander small and finlay sullivan so they're chasing really hard these young guys from north cot little wave building here if he gets over the top you can pull the hair put the glasses down mick he's working so hard here oh no the party wave is going to bring them all back together they hell oh, the north cot competitor just looks over his shoulder right at the moment when he didn't need to another wave building he gets the run now who will it be here's the change of we know the north cot pedigree when they run but they are away, and the fastest man on the beach at the moment, he is gone and gone so fast that no one will come near him. That is Trig Island's newly minted runner, and what a run that was. The Trent Yates Travelator happened, and no one got near him, and what a team that is of young 14-year-old boys. So Trig Island 1, Northcott 2, City of Perth 3, Sorrento 4, Northcott 5, Sorrento 6. Awesome energy, awesome. I, lo I love it. I love watching the, the enthusiasm. It's going to be a bit of a wave for the Irons and the Taplins. This is going to be fun. And what I'm especially excited about for the open female iron, which is about to get underway, we are going to be joined in commentary by none other than Sophie Lloyd, a long-term member of the Western Suns, the Western Australian State Team as an iron woman, one of the prominent figures on the Ironman circuit for many years here in Western Australia. And Sophie Lloyd joins us in the palatial surrounds of the commentary box here at the SunSmart 
WA State Surf Life Saving Championships. Sophie, lovely to see you here in the box. Are you looking forward to this one? I am. I'm really excited. I reckon there's a few winners that could come from it. So it'll be interesting, yeah. So we won't get too much of a call yet. We wait till the, uh, till the actual lineup gets on board and then we will try and pick. Here we see, we can see it now. The open female line woman start lift, Jess Stoop from the City of Perth, Alex Slocum from the City of Perth, Keris Humble, Grace Young, Annie Kanegas, Fem Kanegas, Hanny Young, Millie Cock, Ash Booker and Bethany Bamforth, the Mullaloo competitor. So a mixture of City and Trig in there as well. And Olivia Doddy and Harriet Chin from Sereno. Would you like to pick a top three? Oh, I'm not sure. Um, with a wave on, I'd like to say Keris Humble has a good shot. But um, I know how fit the Neguses are at the moment, so can't go past them either. And so the order, the, the swim, ski, and then board, uh, are these competitors at a level where it doesn't matter which order it, it happens? Or do you think that they do still have a preference? I don't reckon it matters too much. I mean, the strongest swimmers would like the swim towards the end, but, you know, can't always get that. <laughs> no, you cannot. So we are waiting for the start. Open Iron Woman getting to the very pointy end of this championship. It has been a great championship as well. We've got the Open Iron Women, the Open Iron Men. Gracie Young loves a wave to the camera. From the City of Perth competitor. Another one of the Western Suns competitors. Lots of them in this starting lineup. Then following the female, we will have the open male and then the two taplins, the open female and the open male. Two of the real highlights of this carnival and a great way for it to finish. And so if it's a long race, the iron, but, but how important is getting a good start? A good start's really important and working the transitions, but um, you can catch up if you get hit, so yeah. And so is it all about just remaining, if you don't get the start you want, just not panicking, stay composed? Yeah, not panicking, getting on a wash and, yeah, catching up at the end. So, waiting for a start. It's Grace Young closest to camera. Looks like Alex Slocum from the City of Perth next to her. Keris Humble. Grace Young, Jess Stoop. So, we are away and we are racing in the Open Female Iron Race Final for 2024. It looks like it might be Fem Negus getting an early start. Just the, the long legs able to get across that bank. It's a real advantage in the early stages. And they will settle in to the swim with Trig Island in the early lead. So surf has everything in it, in it today, doesn't it, Mick? It's, it's got a, it's, you can put yourself well out in front at the, in these early stages and it's a good place to be because there's no no point in hanging at the back if you can be at the front but then with the little waves we've seen with the uh, the way the ocean's turning up we can see that the, the breeze is trying to come in at the moment so we may not have that affect any of the races but definitely with the swell building the tide going out an opportunity to not panic if you're mid-pack because that space will come for you if you put yourself in the position that allows you to get that wave. So we can see some of the waves now starting to build out around the can area, which means they're going to be picking pretty hard, and that will cause a problem in the second leg of this race, which is the ski. But our early leader at the moment is Annika Negus. She's looking very strong. Arms, good elbow height. She's had a few races already this morning. She won the open female board race just before. Some of the young young guns coming through also will be there. But it's Trig 1-2 at the moment. Harriet Chin in third place. Asher Booker in fourth place. But there's plenty arm in arm. There's a bit of cuddling going around the cans. And I'm not sure it's cuddling that we kind of like. It's the cuddling that you get out of my way. I'm coming through. And they'll... As we see now, the girls have just kind of they've gone in a bit straight. They're swimming over the top of each other. They're grabbing each other. I just don't understand what's happening there when we see the girls grabbing each other when there's no need to do that. So clear, clear pictures there of the young ladies towards the rear of the field just causing problems for each other by trying to create their own space where there was no space to create. Now, Sophie Lord, I know you're normally used to swimming at the front of these packs, but what's it like when you're stuck in the back like that? Yeah, it's not fun. You really do have to get aggressive if you want to get round first. But, um, yeah, it's not great being back there. And do you try and just get yourself out of the way into some clean water or do you try and hold your spot in amongst that mess? It depends. If you're fit enough to go round, I'd always go round. But um, sometimes you've just got to fight your way through. So at the moment, it is Annika Negus in the lead of this open female Ironman race. 
at the 2024 WA State Championships. Trig Island 1-2 at the moment. Sorrento in third. But Anakin Negus has got about a body length over second and third. Harriet Chin, second place at the moment from Sorrento. Just closing that gap. Femke Negus in third place. And Millie Cock is where, uh, there as well. Hannah Young having a storming swim. Gotting herself up into fifth place, but it is Annika Negus. We'll see them closer as they start to hit this wave zone. We've seen the impact it can make. It can be a real advantage or a disadvantage if you get stuck in no man's land. It'll hurt you, but nothing coming at the moment. Annika Negus in the lead. It's all going to be about the transition. Once we get through this wave zone, you've got to run hard, work hard. It's like an extra leg of this race. You can't just dawdle across. You've got to actually pin the ears back. Here comes one from out the back. Hannah Young's well placed. Can she pull over it? She works hard. Yes, she does. So we're going to have five on this wave. The party wave. Olivia Dotty's there as well. We've seen what a great racer she is. So they get up and they start to run. Anakin, Anakin Negus and Olivia Dotty. They are one two at the moment. Harriet Chin is there. Fem Negus and Hannah Young has had a storming swim, but it's going to be Anakin Negus with Olivia Dotty hitting the water. Harriet Chin, Fem Negus, and then Hannah Young from the city of Perth. So, what are they going to do now, So if they're, they're going to get on their skis as clean as they can. Annika's on fast. She'll get past this little bump that happens, and that could open up the race for her if she gets through there. Whereas the girls are going to get swallowed up a little bit. Harriet Chin, she puts the hammer down. So does. So does a young lady out in, uh, from uh, Bunbury, but now at the Trick Surf Life Saving Club in Olivia Dotty. So they're all clear. Even Hannah Young's got through, and that's wonderful to see. Yeah, I mean, you really want to get into a rhythm at this point. Um, I like Karis from here. She's a great ski puddler, and with the board last, um, yeah, she's in a good spot. So big call early. Karis from here, I reckon that she's, she's given the young girls 10 lengths start. And what we're going to find is we're going to have two Negus's girls at one and three with Harriet Chin just up in front. So Harriet wants to go a couple better than last year where I think she won the bronze medal in the open female iron last year where she had a ding-dong race with Keris Humble. So Keris has got a bit of work to do, but no doubt she, which is a smart racer. There's another leg to go. This is the second leg of three. The board is next. But Annika Negus is the best board paddler in the state, right, as we say. So... Well, she's a current champion and uh, winning it probably only half an hour ago. So Annika Negus won. Harriet Chin is lifting and same with Femke Negus in third place. Yeah, an interesting call by uh, Sophie Lloyd. So that's Keris Humble on the pink ski just at the very left-hand side of screen. So she's about, as you can see, about six or seven ski lengths behind. If she's not close enough, I think she won't take it out. But if she's close enough, she should. She just picked up the silver medal in that board race as well. So we know she can paddle aboard. It's all going to be on this last two or 300 metres of this race. He can paddle aboard. It's all going to be on this last two or 300 metres of this race. If Keris Humble can get herself up to the front, she's certainly a red-hot chance. But at the moment, Negus looking very strong out the front. Yeah, it's interesting. All these girls at the front can paddle aboard. So it's going to be really interesting to see who's got the fitness, I reckon. So at the moment, Annika Negus, but look who's hunting the swell. She's hunting the swell so well as Harriet Chin. She's going to give herself an opportunity, but Femke Negus gets a little lift. She hangs, hangs to our right, but there we go. Annika Negus gets a lift now. Harriet Chin gets a lift. Oh, there's so many different runs happening outside. If, if Annika gets on this and gets down it, it's all over, ladies and gentlemen. But it's nose in the air, and we know what nose in the air means. You're not going anywhere. You need to be having nose down. And Femke Negus is going to catch a wave, and that'll catch... Catch right up to Harriet Chin. Oh, the race is on, ladies and gentlemen. So Annika Negus won. Oh, here comes Olivia Dotty on a bomb. She's on. She's down. She'll get across this little chop. So Annika Negus, she is gone, girl, gone. Femke Negus has a bit of a T-bone tumble. And this will be it, ladies and gentlemen. I would bet the house on it at this stage. The Annika Negus will be our Open Women Iron Champion. It's now just for the minor medals. And we've got the two Grace sisters, the two Negus sisters. Sorry, the two young sisters. I'm <laughs> getting carried away, Grace and Hannah. Oh, Harriet Chin will just cop one board on the nose here. But don't forget the young girl racer, Olivia Dotty.
Yeah, and also Gracie Young, she's a really good exponent of the craft. And as you can see, she gets through that chop really well. So she's got herself from about fifth spot into second on that board. Now, Harriet Chin, she'll race smart and jump on the back of Grace Young. And we've seen what Olivia Doddy can do. One of my favourite athletes, just in terms of the dog that she's got in her, she will not give up. Negus has got this on her own. Barring a, a catastrophe, she will take this race out. The, the points are on now for the second, third and fourth for the medals. Grace Young at the moment in second place. She's a very good board paddler. She's leading the way. Harriet Chin sitting there in third. And Olivia Dodd, she's just sidling up past. Harriet Chin at the moment getting herself into the third spot. She's got second on the line. So these minor medals, that's where it's going to be. So Harriet, Harriet Chin just for moving into fourth place at the moment. Then we've got Olivia Dotty in second, in third place. Sorry, in third place. In second place is Grace Young. She's had a great paddle. But Annika Nega, she's absolutely flying. So Olivia Dotty, her first year under 17s. I'm not sure if she's even 16 yet. So she's a 15-year-old. We've had that happen once before when Will Savage won it. But is this the birth of a new young up-and-coming paddler? It is, I no doubt. Her journey so far in surf has been one of absolute achievement, but let's take, take anything away from our leader. She will be our open female board champion and she will be our open female iron champion. The young lady from the streets of Trig Island, Annika Negus, gets over this little, last little wave and she can do the biggest claim of her life because she is our open female iron champion for 2024. And Olivia Dotty, she's paddled herself in a second place at the moment. The race on for third. Olivia will get this wave. Little wave for Olivia. She'll paddle over the top. So there's another young and up and coming. Grace Young. Oh, Grace Young. Here comes Harriet Chin. No, oh, this is not. Olivia Dotty's up. Grace Young, Dotty, Chin. Young, Chin, Chin, Young. Dotty, Dotty, Chin, Young. Who will it be? It's a full race up the beach. And Olivia Dotty, silver medal, and Harriet Chin. What a race, young lady. Well done. And Grace Young, have a bow. This is absolute youth racing at its best. Yeah, and a, a tremendous race there by Hanny Young as well. She had a, a great swim, really good ski paddle. And there she is, fifth place in the open iron. Femke Negus just crossing the line as well, but take nothing away from Annika Negus. Sophie Lloyd, that was a really dominant victory. Yeah, that was amazing. I didn't think that would happen that way, but I'm so stoked for Annika to grab that one. And uh, and Olivia Dotty, again, we talk about the youth in the sport. She's um, a, an amazing athlete. Yeah, she's definitely one to watch out for. That's actually her last individual race in WA, so she'll be happy with that one. So a great result. Great call by Aidan Marchetto, but Annika Negus... She's been one of the rising stars for a long time. She's really stamped authority on it now. And, and Cam, you are down there with a very happy winner. It is just uh, unbelievable. Wins the open board and then fronts up and wins the open iron. Unbelievable. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was pretty hard racing back to back, but just really happy with the result. Your ski, strong. Strong in the ski. And then you looked over the shoulder and it's just as strong as the board. So you, it's a matter of playing the race in your head or you just take it each minute at a time? I was just taking it like each leg at a time and then when I got that wave in the ski it was just amazing and we have a really good ski program at Trig and it's just been really good improving this this year. And Trig's won too as well, you've got the Cornella. Right, Trig won too, like the girls at Trig, they're getting so strong this year and it's just such a good racing squad and training squad to have. Fantastic, there she is, Anika Negus, Anika Negus, the Iron Lady winner and also in the board as well. Absolutely outstanding. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, well done, Cam. Cordero Annika. As we said, a happy Annika Negus is a dangerous Annika Negus. She smiled before the race and she is still smiling after it. And as she should too, she has picked up the gold medal. She is the WA State Open Iron Woman Champion, Annika Negus from Trig Island. On the line now is the Open Iron Men. It's the third last race of the event. We've got the two taplins to follow it. But this one, again, I mean, we're lucky in WA, Hayden. We've got some amazing talent. And again, this is going to be a tough one to call. Tough one to call. Uh, there is the running champion in here. He's taken everything before him this morning. In Matthew, in Matthew Collis. He's had a wonderful, wonderful start today. He's taken out the board. 
the open swim. Can he do the um, open iron? It's really a unique space to be if you can do that. He'll be a Hall of Famer, no doubt, in the years to come. Well above our pay grade, Mick, Hall of Famer. But that'll be nice for the Collis family to have. I'm actually in the Hall of Fame, Hayden, but um, I've set a standard very early in my household. But look at some of the some of the names in this race. Guys like, you know, Chucky Hewitt and Ethan Jackson. They did the cool and get a gold back in October. So they have had an, an amazing build up to this race. Chucky Hewitt has left no stone unturned in his pursuit of this title. He is an outstanding swimmer. His ski paddling is outstanding. And his board paddling is a lay down board paddle. He's got Jake Smith's old board. That was a fast board. And he gets that thing moving along. We know that he can swim well. So for me, Chucky Hewitt, look for him for this race. Paddy Eli as well. Um, really surprising about how good his swimming has got. And we know what a great board paddler and a great ski paddler he is. Talk about Ethan Jackson. Just one of these hungry. He's got that Olivia Dotty kind of dog in him where he's a great athlete. He's got great skills. And he's got that fight that just he will not let anything go. So... And then, oh, look, it's, it's going to be it's a great field. Kai Maketo, one of the youngsters in there that's going to be in the mix as well. Um, Harry Hewitt, one of the great competitors. Brody Lee, we saw what he can do as an under 17 year old. As you mentioned, you know, Will Savage has done it. He's taken this out as a youngster as well. So, some great competitors. It's going to be a, a wonderful lineup. 20 young men vying for the title. Jules Frenano, we talked about can he go, can he do the double, can he win the under 19 and the open Ironman? Jackson Blom. Um, Matthew Rowe, Tim Tukak, uh, Lockie Brigland, Fred and I have spoken about, Ken Jenkinson, Ben Jones, you know, Trig on the great competitor, went away with the Western Suns, Maxi Hunter, the great wriggler, terrific swimmer as well, Joel Dotty, Ben Snook, Harry Lee, um, just so many great names in this race. So many great names, great swimmers, so, you know, swim to start, I think we spoke to Sophie before, if you're a good swimmer, you'd prefer it to be later on, so... The beauty of this is that if you're, if you're not quite as sharp as the, some of the league guys, then maybe you can just sit in and let them do the work because the opportunity will come for you. The opportunity will come, no doubt. And, some, and Timmy Tusak there from uh, Swanee Netherlands. Great to see the, the red cap with the white stripe. But we have an exciting time ahead. And as, we, as, we, as we've seen, just this this wave you, you're not out of it you might be you know 30 meters behind in the second leg but you can pick up a ski wave from the can and all of a sudden go from eighth to to first so it's going to be an exciting race the open ironman the final someone will be crowned a state champion at the end of this race and we are away the Open Ironman at the 2024 Sun Smart Open Ironman. Harry Hewitt very well and quick across that bank. Maxi Hunter's there as well. Matty Collison on that northern side. Always quick to get out. Then they're straight into their swim. So you've got Paddy Eli from Sorrento and Chucky Hewitt on the southern side. Matt Collis from the City of Perth on the northern side. Harry Hewitt from the City of Perth in the middle, along with Maxi Hunter and Kai Marketo as well. So as they make their way out, it's a pretty much a straight line as these competitors make their way out to the cans, the first leg of the Open Ironman at the State Championships 2024. So Chucky Hewitt and um, Patrick Ely, definitely early leaders here. The, 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 they'll squish across, but Matty, Matty Collis on that northern edge, he's definitely flying, but he's got to come out and round that can, so he's got a bit of swimming to do to get to that can. Kai Marchetto just sitting in behind there, probably in third, third or fourth position, so he'd be happy with his start. So Matty Collis pushed over to Charlie Hewitt. So they're your two early leaders with Patrick Ely there also, and... A couple of another city of Perth, Harry Hewitt, Kai Marketo getting squashed in that sandwich, sandwich of white water. You've just got to be the big dog and force your way through because if you get caught and pushed under there like like we're seeing right now, it, there is no breathing to be done, and you don't want to be touching the bottom of the sand by that either. So that's a great start by Chucky Hewitt. Now I think he's the favourite going to this race because he's got a great swim leg as we know. And his ski leg is very, very strong. So if he can get on that ski first and get himself away, he's going to be very, very hard to catch because he can maintain a pace on the board. At the moment, it is Chucky Hewitt in the lead. Matt Collis from the City of Perth just sitting on his feet. He'll enjoy sitting there because he knows that if he can stay with Chucky, he's going to give himself a chance. Paddy Eli just on that northern side. And it looks like it might be um, Ben Jones 
from Trig Island just tucked there in fourth place. So it's City 1 2. Sereno, Pat Eli in third. Ben Jones there in fourth. Jules Fredenay, the under nine champion, in fifth place. Harry Hewitt just tucked in behind him as well. All these guys, very good speed paddles. Chucky Hewitt and Pat Eli in particular, very good on the ski, as is Harry Hewitt. So if Harry Hewitt can stay with his lead pack in the swim, which he certainly can, we saw him yesterday in the, in the uh, mixed taplin. If he can get away on the ski as well, it's going to be a race in about three or four. But at the moment, Chucky Hewitt looking very, very strong, leading the opening leg of the open Ironman. So we've got Hewitt, Collis, Ely, Jones, Fredenay, Hewitt, Marchetto, just in behind there. Ethan Jackson's there. So great ski paddler there. So a couple of the boys just don't need to panic this early. There's no ways building at the moment. There's one coming through, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to pick it up in the front. So if the boys fourth, fifth and sixth just hang in there, they'll get their opportunity. It won't bypass them. So they're in. They're in with a chance because there's a wave building out the back. And wouldn't you read about it? Charlie Hewitt, he's led the whole way. Will this give him the energy? Will he get off scot-free without a party wave at the back? Because it doesn't look like there's one coming. Maybe there's one coming now. Now, and there is one coming now so Charlie Hewitt will just pop up Maddie, Maddie Collis second place there you one two punch at the moment third place pushing up now is Ben Jones Ben Jones had a great one great swim then Patrick Ely so Patrick Ely so we got who we got we got Chucky Hewitt Matt Collis Ben Jones has had a storm of Patrick Ely Kai Marketo, Harry Hewitt a bit of bargy bit of argy with the city of Perth Germans they're not real happy with each other in that space so here we go. Who's going to get on first? Oh, a little wave building. This will help. This will help. Chucky, if he gets on and goes, they've got to get on and go. The other boys will cop this one right on the chin. And they're away. So this is where Chucky Hewitt needs to stamp his authority on this race. We know he's a good ski paddler, but his board leg would be, if he's got a weak leg, the board would be his weak leg. But the chase pack is now coming. So Chucky Hewitt, he needs to extend his lead. He's got about three or four ski lengths at the moment over Matt Collis. It looks like Kent Jenkinson, it might be there from the city of Perth. He's going to sneak up alongside Matt. Matt needs to jump on the wash of one of these paddlers because he knows that they are better paddlers. Patrick Eli is there as well. Harry Hewitt, we know how much he loves the fight. At the moment, though, by two or three ski lengths in the lead, it is Chucky Hewitt from the City of Perth. City of Perth in second through Matt Collis. Kent Jenkinson, we know what a great ski paddler he is. He is currently in third. Okay, so what have we got? Hewitt first, Collis second, Jenkinson third, Jones fourth, Eli fifth, Marketo sixth. That's your top six at the moment. Oh, gone out wide. I'm not sure about that one. What's happened? He's had a bit of a brain snap. We saw that yesterday. And that's all of a sudden opened the door to the ma magic mask machine, the orange and blue. Oh, they'll tag each other around this, which won't be much fun. And it's opened the door for the rest of the competitors. Yeah, so Chucky Hewitt, he went out to the long can and he realised his mistake, so he'll be a little bit angry. He'll dig the paddles in now, pin the ears back and try and pick up these runs. We know what he can do in the open water. Here he goes, he picks up a run. He's a very, very good open water paddler. He's done a whole series this year in the, the summer of surf with the paddling. Here he goes now. Patrick Eli starting to come. Kent Jenkinson there as well. Patrick Eli on the hunt. Ethan Jackson as well. And it looks like Jules Frenet. Party wave for them all. So Matt Collis is on it. Kent Jenkins is on it. Chucky Hewitt's on it as well. Also Patrick Eli. So amazing racing. Matty Collis may have pulled over it. So it's going to be Matt Collis and Chucky Hewitt. Looks like they'll be the first to the beach. Board lead to go. So board leg to go, Charlie Hewitt looking strong, Ethan Jackson looking strong, Matt Collis looking strong. You'd have to think he's the chance, Matt Collis. As the rest of the field starts to catch up as they get on the party wave, as they hit the bottom, they'll have to paddle hard to keep it from skewing because there is a bomb behind them. Oh, Marquetto will skew. He'll get off, don't worry about that one. Oh, he side saddles it. Don't you worry about the radio ranch. But in the lead at the moment, Charlie Hewitt, it's all happening, Patrick Ely, Big chance here, Matty Collis. He has hit the wall. He has hit the wall and he needs to lift. Ethan Jackson, he's been my smoky. He's out there. He's done a mountain of work. He's a tremendous board paddler. He will sit with Patrick Eli. So now they will try. Chucky needs to get across and sit on the wash of Patrick Eli, then pin the ears when he turns that candle. I think that it's going to be. So Chucky Hewitt, we know he can motor along. Chucky Hewitt is in the lead at the moment. Patrick Eli is content to sit there. Pat's got the best back end out of all the bad paddlers in, board paddlers in this field. Ethan Jackson as well, an enormous tank, an enormous fight. Matt Collis, he's had a big weekend so far. 
He's still in there, but he's obviously going to be hurting at the moment. But I think he might have enough still left in the tank to fight for it. Chucky Hewitt in the lead. Patrick Eli second. Ethan Jackson in third. Matt Collis in fourth. So this is the race he wanted, Patrick Ely. He's now hit the lead, and we know his surf skills. So who from behind can combine to make sure he doesn't get away? Because if he gets away, put your glasses down. Will this be one of the open miracles? The great surf paddler, the great surf ski paddler, now becoming the good ocean swimmer. Will he take the iron out? This is his chance. He's opened the door for himself. He doesn't want to get caught waiting. Watch him chase north as he tries to pick up the lines as swell when he gets around this green and white can. Can't discount Ethan Jackson. Can't discount Chucky Hewitt either. Chucky contentious to sit there on that lie down board. Now this is where Paddy Eli starts to show his strength. He's got an enormous back end. Ethan Jackson will stay with him. We know how quick Jackson is on that transition. Patrick Eli gets the butterfly stroke going. Milks this ocean. Matt Collis is back up on his knees as well. It's going to be a race between three. So Matt Collis digging deep. I don't know where he's finding it from. Patrick Eli. Patrick Eli needs a little bit of a wave. Wave coming out the back. Patrick Eli, way from the back. Matt Collis digs deep. Ethan Jackson's there as well. It's going to be Patrick Eli. He's jumped off his board early. It's going to be a foot race for the one and two. Matt Collis and Paddy Eli. Who's going to be the quickest across the sand? Matt gets up. Paddy's running as well. Patrick Eli from Sereno. Matt Collis chasing from the city of Perth. It's Eli. It's Collis. Here comes Matt Collis. Here comes Patrick Eli. Can Matt get there? Can he get there? I don't think he will. I think Eli might have got there. Oh, they don't come any closer. Patrick Eli, Matt Collis, Jules Fredenay from the clouds, Chucky Hewitt and Ethan Jackson. Amazing racing. I don't know where these guys get their energy from. That was an extraordinary battle from the start to finish. The foot race between Patrick Eli and Matt Collis. Oh, you've got to go back a long way to see finishes like that. You've got to go back to Greg Mickle, James O'Toole and Michael Liggins days for such tight finishes. And they are all absolutely exhausted. We couldn't see who won it here. They are absolutely broken. What a finish. Matt Collis, Patrick Eli, a sprint finish. Jules Fredenay, an, an amazing end to an enormous program for the yet, yet young man. Still only 19. Oh, I can't, I'm, I can't call it. Really close. So Patrick kicked again just when Matty was going to swallow him all up. So uh, your first place getter yet to be announced. Uh, so third Jenkinson, I would say, or Charlie Hewitt. Probably Charlie Hewitt it is. Jenkinson. So Jules, Jules, Jules third. Hewitt. Jenkinson, Marquetto, the top six. And what a race that was. That was a final final beyond its years i love it what a classic race a battlestar galactica and patrick ely raced so brave he got out in front but the wave matty was waiting for i thought he was gone i actually thought he was climbing the wall when he hit the water on the board but uh, as you as you called he didn't know where he got the energy from and could he take the three peat that would be one of the uh, most amazing outcomes and we'll just get confirmation but it looks like I reckon Matty Collis might have got it. Oh, it looks pretty close to call. I, you know, it's split. Let's cut the middle in half. That was a, that was a tremendous race. <laughs> so we'll wait and see who ended up getting it. So Cam is down there with, with the winner. I certainly am, boys. Matty Collis has got on the inside. You guys caught it so well. Coming to the board, guys, he was spent, absolutely spent. He just dug deep and got over line in the sprint. So Matty Collis has gone back to back, boys, in the eye. Matty, well done. Cheers, mate. Yeah, I can't really believe it. I thought I was out of it on the way out on the board there, but luckily everything went my way today. And just repeating, he's, all, he's won the swim, he's won the board, and now he's won the eye, mate. This, this uh, game's a giggle for you. Yeah, I'm honestly shocked. Like, I'm so happy with how today's gone. And, like, there's such great competitors here. Paddy's always pushing me. And, yeah, I'm glad today that everything's just gone my way. And you won it last year, so you've gone back to back. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't be more happier. No, well done, mate. You're a tournament, you're an ornament to the uh, surf life saving movement. Your dad up the back, very proud of you, mate. Well done. Fantastic effort. Well done. Cheers.
Thank Great you. to see the vision cap there on our iron champion, our surf race champion, and our open board champion, Matthew Collis, embraced by his father, a future Hall of Famer there. In our eyes there, Matthew Collis, of course, Chemical Engineering and Finance, double major there for that young man. I believe he's going to move to Switzerland and do some study. I think the rest of the competition will be pretty happy about that because he has had a sweep of medals today. Patrick Ely, unlucky on the line, got the legs going, but kicked when it mattered, but just couldn't hang on. It must be so close. Uh, the young Jules Fredney, third. Charlie Hewitt, fourth. Ken Jenkinson, fifth. Kai Marketo, sixth. They're the points. And what a race that was, ladies and gentlemen. A wonderful race. And we now we're in the final two events of what has been a wonderful surf life saving state championships. Of course, SunSmart, our proud partner, and uh, we'll just uh, take stock here because that was magnificent. What a what a talent, a wonderful talent, and he loves himself. He loves his uh, journey that he does in the surf, and uh, I'm sure whole city of Perth will draw a whole lot of joy from Matty Collis loving life again, and. Um, I know Mick, Mick's now hot on the uh, text message and all the congratulations that he's taking on board for himself, but it wasn't him, it was his son. He was feeling the heat, he did feel the obligation that he needed to do. He has, uh, he's unforgiving with his self-scrutiny, isn't he, Mick? And um, every lens and every eye was on him and he didn't wince, didn't turn it up. He just took that moment and uh, above all, all, all he was uh, crowned the champion. Yeah, I thought he was cactus when he got on that board. He um, he looked pretty tired. He hasn't hasn't done a lot of ski training, and I, I know that ski would have taken a lot out of him because they've set a cracking pace. You know, as I mentioned, Chucky Hewitt's such a a good ski paddler, and 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 Pat Eli as well, and and Kent. So he really had to work hard, and, and I think he really was spent. But he got back on that board, and I don't know, found a second win from somewhere. And and again, you know, we talk about the luck of surf. And, you know, Matt had some luck today. He, he was able to get on that board that Ethan Jackson just missed, you know. And so you've got to feel for these guys. But it's, it's I mean, look, we hate this, I hate the saying that surf, but that's the way it is. You take your good luck when you get it. He's had a fair bit of bad luck along the way, but he's got some good luck this weekend and, and good on him. But I know the focus now will all be for all these competitors on this open taplin. Um, you just got to hope that they haven't spent too much. They've got a little bit left in the tank to try and back up and go around again. So, because that's the one they want to win. I mean, look, it's great to get the individual honours, but but for me, for an event like surf, where you do so much individual racing, once you can get into that team environment and you're not just racing for yourself, you are racing for your team, that's the one that all these competitors, they want to win because it is, you don't just go home and sit there by yourself. You go out with five of your mates and you can go and have a beer or a burger or whatever you want to go and do and, and celebrate that victory together. So... That's why I like these two events that we've got coming up now the best. It's the Open Female Taplin Relay and the Open Male Taplin Relay. A great way to finish what has been a, a wonderful carnival. And the teams in the female, we've got Cottesloe Team Black, Cottesloe Team White, City of Perth, and, and Hayden Marchetto has really given me some grief here with this um, thing. City of Bunbury, City of Perth, two or three teams from the city, four teams from the City of Perth, which is terrific. Two from Cottesloe, one from Mullaloo, two from... Uh, from Northcott, three from Sorrento, and two teams, in fact, four teams, five teams from Trig Island. So great depth from Trig. Yeah, great depth from all clubs up and down our coast. Um, everyone's still building momentum, as possible, but the swell has picked up. So as that tide's gone out, it's, it's exposed the bank a little bit more, and so the waves are breaking a bit further out. So it's opportunity, as we saw then, you're never out of it, and Patrick used that opportunity for himself he swam within himself got on the ski put the nose where it needed to go and then on the board just was all over it so a great return to racing for him in the iron series and uh, he should be really proud just being beaten on the line there by sprint up the beach i never knew matt was a sprinter well, that, that's you know that's one thing that I know he would have he would have backed himself on that sprint because he went away with the Western Suns and one of his roles there was as a beach sprinter, and he picked up a silver medal at the beach championships in the beach mixed beach relay for the city of Perth. So, I think he, he knew if he was in a couple of meters that he would have the pace to to run down anyone that was in front of him. And um, 
Oh, look, that, that, that race, what a, look, it's a tough race. And to have a finish like that in these conditions where a wave can make such a difference, it's a real credit to all those competitors. And there was, what, the first five came across within about five seconds of each other. So just really, really even racing. And, uh, but look, a great result for City. And he can relish in the moment that it is where he can hold his arms up high. Not that he will because he's quite a uh, modest young man. And But let's move on to these three-person taplins, the female final. Straight up final here we have it. The three-person three, three -person open female taplin. And what a race this will be. As Mick said, five teams from Trig Island, four from City of Perth, five from City of Perth. Sorry, four from City of Perth, City of Bunbury, two from Cot, Mullaloo, North Cot's got two, Sereno's got three. Geez, this could come from anywhere. There's such high quality in these teams, and I wonder, I wonder if the the City of Perth team of Daisy Hewitt, Jess Sloop, and Grace Young. So Trig Green, North Cop Blue, Sereno B, Sereno C, North Cop White, Trig Red City, Trig Cottesloe and City. So massive field ready for a start, swim, ski, board. Daisy Hewitt, she'll be one of the favourites to take out the swim, but I know some of the trick girls who are beaten, they, what, they've got something to prove in this space. Sam Lowry will be there. Sophie Barron Hay, no doubt. A couple of the young guns, Lani back, so she'll be a chance. And Eleanor Flowers, of course. Sammy Brigden, closest to screen on the right of screen there. Great to see Sammy racing. Harriet Chin. Freshly minted bronze medalist in the open female iron. Lani Baxter there in shot. Eleanor Flowers concentrating, getting her breathing ready. Kate Riggles also there from Cottesloe. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The final race for the females in the... Sunsmart WA Surf Life Saving Championships for 2024. This is the three-person open female Taplin relay. And away well, off to a start. So Northcott flying. Sophie Baron Hayes also got into the water extremely well. Daisy Hewitt's out there. Same with the girls from Trig in the middle. Kate Riggles had an ex excellent start in the middle of the, of the field. And she'll be one of the first out there, the young gun. So Kate Rigol, she'll be in the Cottesloe team black and she'll be one of our early leaders. She had a great swim earlier today. Uh, this could be a crowning moment for her though from the Cottesloe Surf Life Saving Club. Yeah, so Kate Rigol from Cot is out as is. It looks like Daisy Hewitt from the City of Perth. We just saw her win the open female surf race. She's in a team with Jess Stoop and Grace Young. So they're pretty strong right across the park. The other one from the City of Perth with Sophie Baron Hay getting a good, good lead. She's got Nikita Frenet and Hannah Young in her team. So some real strength and depth in the City of Perth at the moment. Absolutely. So lining up side by side, we've got Daisy Hewitt's just pulled up alongside Kate Rigol. Down on the northern edge or the bottom edge of our screen at the moment is another City of Perth competitor, which is Sophie Baron Hay. So Sophie Baron Hay, Daisy Hewitt, they're your one, two. Trig Island in the second, third and fourth with Kate Rigol just getting churned up a little bit there as she went under the, one of the arms of the competitors. She went left when she could have gone a bit straighter. So there's great footage at the moment. So that's meant that she's gone from second through to fifth. So at this stage, out and about, we've got the two City of Perth swimmers. They're doing a great job. 
Eleanor Flowers, she's pulled up alongside the young Hewitt and, uh, sorry, Sophie Baron Hay, and she's working hard for her trig team. So Daisy Hewitt in, in front at the moment, Sophie Baron Hay in third spot, Eleanor Flowers, Trig Island. She's in second spot. In third, fourth spot at the moment is Sammy Brigden, Trig Island. Then there's another Trig team. Then we've got Sorrento, Cottesloe, Trig Island, and Northcott. So early stages of the open female Taplin relay. The gold medal on the line, Daisy Hewitt, will turn the can in first place for the city of Perth. She'll be looking to pass on the uh, ski over to, to Grace Young. Under 19 gold medalist in the iron. And it is Eleanor Flowers. These two have had a wonderful battle all weekend. Daisy Hewitt got the chocolates in the open swim. Flowers, though, we talked about at the back end. She's just sitting on, she just moved up now to Daisy Hewitt's hips. So Eleanor Flowers increased the rating on the stroke as well. So she's pulling up almost alongside Daisy Hewitt. Sophie Baron Hay sticking on the feet of Flowers. She's swimming smart. So it is the City of Perth and Trig Island, neck and neck. They are dead even at the moment, coming in at the conclusion of the swim leg of the open female tap. And it looks like Flowers may have just got a head in front of Daisy Hewitt. Safe Baron Hayes sticking in there as well. Trig back with. Then there's two Trig competitors in fourth and fifth. Coming into the wave zone. We know how much of a difference this can make. Bit of a wave building, a bit of a lift. Can someone get it? Flowers has just got a nose in front. Hewitt's there. Wave now coming. Sophie Baron, hey, can she get it? No, she can't. None of them can. In that dead water zone, waiting for the next bump. So, luckily for the girls in front at the moment, there's no wave coming except might sweep this one up. There's one out the back, but I don't re reckon it'll reach them in time. Or maybe it will, Mick. So they're still in that dead yellow water, as we like to say. But a bigger wave building. It's a double up. This will bring fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, right up to the lead. Don't look around, ladies. Pin your ears back and run because here come your team. Here come the other teams. And the young Eleanor Flowers, she'll take out this lead lap. Hand over to the ski paddler and away they go. So Trig 1, City of Perth 2, Trig 3, Trig 4 at this stage. Yeah, Sophie Lloyd there. Great swim from her in fourth place. So the first handover, it goes to Jazz Shipway Car on the ski. Fem Kanigas there, Grace Young for the City of Perth, Paige Wood from Trig Island. So Jazz Shipway Car gets away cleanly. Paige Wood, tremendous ski paddler. She'll want to try and get herself up next to Grace Young, and then when the time comes, try and pounce Negus. She needs to try and hang with the uh, with the other competitors in front of her. But at the moment, Jazz Shipway Car, City of Perth. Nikita Ferdinand from the City of Perth in fifth place. And Jamie Roberts, look at the rating on the Sereno paddler as she steams up alongside Nikita Ferdinand. Extremely quick rating from Roberts, but it is Jazz Shipway Car with about an eight or so ski length lead over second place. So here we go. They'll paddle out now around those turning markers, the yellow and red cans out at sea. So the yellow and red cans out at sea is where they'll go around. Jazz Shipway Carbonator, there she is. She's out in front. She is our open ski female champion. And she's flying out there at the moment. Paige Wood has put the mat medal down too. She wants to have a piece of this action. She doesn't want to be silver or bronze. She wants to be gold. So she gets herself off the back of these cans. These two girls training all the time together, week in, week out. I believe they did some racing around uh, internationally as well. So Jazz Shipway Car gets a lift, but Paige Wood gets a bigger lift at the moment. She gets that run all the way. And we see the runs lining up perfectly here now at the moment. Femke Negus has come around the outside of Grace Young, so it's a one, two, three for Trig at the moment. Little wave building here for Paige Wood. She just needs to get it, keep her composure about herself, unlike us in the commentary box. Jazz Shipway Car, a little bit of suck back, which means there's a wave building for her. Nose in the air, but there we go. That is how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. We are not playing advantage. We are not playing holding the ball. The door was open, and through you went. And that is done, that is gone, that is gold, gold, gold to that particular team. Paige Wood finishing strong. Jamie Roberts has come from the bleachers. She'll definitely paddle down this next wave. The girls will next, Fam Kanegas, sorry, Anna Kanegas. So changeover about to happen. 
And Annika Negus, she's in the water. The sprint's on, Paige Wood holding on here, but here comes a fast look at Femke Negus go. She has really picked up her pace on running. She'll tag Keris Humble and chasing now. They will hit the water together, the girls. So Annika Negus, that's a big lead that she's got. Keris Humble will chase her and chase her down hard. But I think it might be too much of a lead for Negus. We've seen how good she is and how strong she is on this board. So it's going to be a race for the minor medals. Keris Humble starting to pull a little bit away from her, from Ash Booker chasing her in Sorrento in the Sorrento Cup. And Georgia Moore from Trig Island in fourth. But it is Annika Negus on that pink board out in front where it has been so often over this weekend turning the apex can more than half of her race now done Keris Humble still digging in there still chasing she knows Humble's been in this ocean enough to know that a wave can still pick her up if Negus gets stuck in some dead water Ash Booker having a sterling paddle as well trying to stick with Humble and Georgia Moore on the yellow board in fourth so the race for the minor placings is going to be on Negus is going to take out the gold then there's going to be silver and bronze between Humble Booker and more. So Negus one, Humble two, Booker three, more four. So gold you'd think right now is going to come from Trig Island barring an absolute T-bone disaster and just like that she'll paddle down the face of this wave. Has a look behind, little wave building out the back here, Humble needs to get over the top of it because Booker's working very hard. So humble, Booker, Booker, humble. But gold will go to the Trig Island A team. Annika Negus. Absolutely flying today. And she'll be pretty happy with that result. Georgia Moore goes down a bomb. Anyone's races. Keris looks to run and goes, oh my goodness. A sprint finish again. This is not what I really want to do. Let's see how we go. I reckon Georgia Moore might have second place here. Ash Booker, more, more, Booker, Booker, more. Up the beach they go. More, Booker, more. Georgia Booker, oh, wow. And humble fourth. Ash Booker, what a race, what a run. Oh, how good. Just amazing, as we spoke about in the iron, for a, a long race just how close these finishes are that's extraordinary coming down to these sprint finishes in that case for the minor medals between second and third but just extraordinary a, a tremendous win there by trig and there by annika negus but georgia moore coming from the clouds and ash book of the sprint from sereno but trig going one two sereno picking up third great racing in the open female taplin living up to expectation and then the last race in this arena will be the open male tap and they're not far away but a very very happy Trig Island going 1-2 in the open female taplin Cam I'm sure you're down there somewhere yes you are if you can grab the victors they don't need to get their breath back they'll be pretty happy they'll be happy to chat here we are guys and girls I'm trying to get the girls Trigs have got the Quinella here one and two but look have a look at them the looks on their face, there's something in the water at Triggs, guys and girls. I'll get the, uh, the guru shrami here, Jazzy. Jazzy, how good was that? Oh, so good. I'm so proud of these girls. Both under 17, smashing in the open, so it makes me super proud to be here. It's more important that you compete on individual events as well. You must be absolutely cooked, but you still want to win this race, so well done. Yeah, yeah thanks. It's been a big weekend, but yeah, I love it. So much fun. Just push through the next race. And Nika, we'll need a, a trailer to put all your medals in. How good was that? Yeah, no, it's been really good. Just all the girls have stepped up and just done all the team events, all the events, and it's just really paid off. Fantastic. There you go, guys. How good was that? Trig's got the Quinella one and two. Yeah, great interview there, Cam. The Sea Rob on the beach for us today. Joe Shipway Carbonator, Annika Negus, and Eleanor Flowers, the 15, the 17, and the 21-year-old. Across a bit of an age bracket there, it's wonderful to see. They are number one gold, three-person Taplin winners. And what a morning it's been for those three ladies. 
So in the water, just checking out the bank. This is the one that I've been looking forward to. I know we're supposed to be not be biased, but I just think this is a wonderful race. The open male six-person Taplin relay. Six competitors from the club making up one of the teams, and it's great to see the depth. Trigger have got three teams. The City of Perth have got two. Sereno have got a couple in there as well. Mullaloo, Northcott with two. Really looking forward to this one. Cottesloe with a team. So it is two swimmers, two ski paddlers, and two board paddlers. We've seen how close the iron events have been, how close the taplins have been, the females. And now it is the open male six-person taplin. I think it'll come down to between City of Perth, Trigg and Sorrento. And Aiden, this is the one, this is the bragging rights on this one, isn't it? Absolute bragging rights. And Byron Kimber, he'll be, swat, he'll be settling up for Sorrento here. So he hasn't had a swim all weekend and uh, he is in their A team and no doubt will create an opportunity for people to chase because he will be probably the fastest one in the water. A very strong team of Michael Booth, Patrick Ealy, Byron Kimber, Brendan Naylor, Joe Quirk and Joshy Windsor. So Byron Kimber and Joe Quirk, they'll be swimming. Uh, Booth and Windsor, they'll be paddling the ski. And Ealy and Naylor, they'll, well, they'll be paddling the board. So an amazing opportunity for these guys. Doesn't come easy to win a Taplin. It doesn't come easy to win a state Taplin. Doesn't come easy to be in the, the A Taplin team. So well, we'll see if the bees, the buzzkills will get up and and make make a difference there as we saw one of the B or C teams got get the silver medal there for Trig Island which is unreal to see. Ready for a stop. And they're away cleanly here. Jarvis Karen with a flying start down the bottom, bottom edge. So here we go. So it's two swims, two skis, two boards. This just sit, sit back. We need the Shea Lounge right now. <laughs> I'm thinking a bit of Valua Shea Lounge. Dark, dim the lights and watch the wild screen in front of us flow. Yeah, this is like watching a big screen TV here and it's I'm loving what we're seeing. So Byron Kimber from Sorrento. He's got a good early start. Chucky Hewitt is there as well from the city of Perth. But it looks like Jake Smith, he might be stamping his authority earlier on this open mail taplin. Jake Smith on the right-hand side. Ollie Brehow just tucked in behind him and then looks like Byron Kimber off his hip. So it's a half a body length by Smith over Brehow. Kimber now starting to make his move. Just about to swim past Ollie Brehow and he'll have his sights set on Jake Smith. Jake Smith, he's, he's fought his way back from a, a nasty injury. He said he's almost back to his playing weight, almost back to full fitness. So Jake Smith will turn that can in first place. Plenty of argy-bargy. Byron Kimber. Him and Jake Smith almost punching each other in the face as they swim along. It's like a water polo match out there if you could throw a ball. But Byron and Kimber... He's now got himself half a body length just in front of Jake Smith. Jake Smith all over him. They're not even heading for cans. They're just worrying about each other at the moment. They've all missed the can. So Byron and Kimber. I oh, know they haven't. So we're all okay. So the green cans, but they're going on all sorts of angles from the aerial shots here. So it's going to be Byron and Kimber from Sorrento to set up that team that we spoke about. The team of Michael Booth, Patrick Eli. Brendan Naylor, Joe Quirk and Josh Windsor. Strength right across the park. This is the one that they want to win. Trig Island chasing hard behind them. Then it looks like the second Sereno team. Chucky Hewitt from the City of Perth. He's in fourth place. North Cottesloe in fifth at the moment. Cottesloe just tucked behind in sixth. But it, at the moment, Hayden, it is Byron Kimber. He's about two or three body lengths in the lead. So the green machine is out in front here. He'll hand over to Joe Quirk. Then we'll have... The Trig Island competitor will hand over the Max Hunter. So 
One swim is going to be completed. Will there be a party wave? We're not sure at the moment. We're waiting for the City of Perth boys to come into the show because they've got an epic team. But Kimber has kicked away here. He's put two or three body lengths on. But there is a wave building just outside the cans, ladies and gentlemen. Will this be the opportunity that they need to get Byron Kimber? Because he has gone. He is long gone. And if they miss this wave, the game could be over. It will be over. This is the moment now where Sorrento could take total charge of this event. But he misses the wave, gets the wave. And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. Joe Quirk has a glory run now while the rest of the competition has to get a wave. This is the moment that they've all been waiting for at Sorrento. Yeah, that's a great wave from Byron Kimber. But you've got to watch. So if Chucky Hewitt, if he can get himself up, there he is. Chucky Hewitt's up and running. We've got Harry Hewitt is the next swimmer. And we saw Harry Hewitt, the dog in that bloke, the fight that he has got. He'll be having Joe Quirk in his sights. So Chucky Hewitt, so it's Byron Kimber, Sorrento, they are now in the lead. Northcott in second place. Cottesloe in third. City of Perth in fourth. Jake Smith there from Trig Island in fifth. Harry Hewitt now. He goes across that bank. He'll be trying to swim down Joe Kirk and get City of Perth back in amongst the medals. Great racing. Second leg of the open mail. Taplin underway. So Joe will feel the heat. There is no doubt about that. Willie's in carnival endurance stand the test of time. He's headed a bit right. He doesn't need to head right. He's got to stay left. He must stay left, young man. Stay left. Keep your arms high. Keep that kick going and you'll stay out in front because the chasing pack is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the races for the ages. Look at the way the North Cot team's lifting out of the water. It's like a water polo match, but there is no balls in sight. Cotter's low in second place at the moment. Trig Island have moved into third. Oh, wow, this is going to be a wonderful race. And Quirk, he's had to readjust his angle as the rest of the hunters are coming. So it is. North, in fact, Sorrento. Joe Quirk in the lead. Cottesloe in second. Harry Hewitt from the City of Perth. He's got himself up to third, sitting on the feet of the North Cock competitor. They are trying to work together to swim down Joe Kirk. Harry Hewitt sitting on the North Cot competitor. Quirk turns the can. As you can see, as he does, he's got about a six or seven, maybe eight body length lead over North Cot. City of Perth, Harry Hewitt about a body length behind in third. Then it looks like Cottesloe in fourth place, Trig Island in fifth. Second leg, open male Taplin, Sorrento in the lead. The gap closing though, North Cottesloe closing the gap, pulling away from Harry Hewitt. Hewitt needs to stay on his feet. Once they turn this can, this is when they'll be pitting the ears back. They'll lift the rating. Adam Sudlow from North Cottesloe. A nationally ranked swimmer. But it is still Quirk from Sorrento in the lead. Adam Sudlow has closed the gap. Harry Hewitt doing extremely well to stay with Sudlow. City of Perth in third. Cottesloe in fourth. Coming back towards the beach. Sudlow almost up alongside Joe Quirk. It's been an amazing swim from Adam Sudlow. Joe Quirk, try and hang on. He's breathing to his right so he can't see Sadlow sneaking up on his outside. Cottesloe coming as well. You can see him alongside Harry Hewitt from the City of Perth. So it is North Cottesloe may have just popped into the lead by about a half head thanks to Adam Sudlow. He swam down Joe Quirk. Harry Hewitt still chasing Cottesloe there as well. So we know the handover now is to world class, class paddlers. A wave building here. Will Sudlow get the opportunity to get down it? He won't. So that'll open the door for the back markers. There's fifth, sixth, and seventh going. Hold on, Huey. Wait for me. Don't get the one, two. Get the five, six, seven, eight. That's what we're looking for. And would you know it, Huey's going to respond. So third and fourth will definitely get this first look. Will it go under him? Joe Quirk, he'll just get onto that. And that'll be those two now out in the lead. And that is a big lead now. That'll take some winning. But look at Joe Quirk's sir, skills, ladies and gentlemen. He is up. He's leading. And he's getting splashed by his teammates. He will be the first to change over. He's going to turn over. But no one better and stronger in the water of the ski at the moment than Michael Booth. Oh, so Sereno in a very good position. But Cottesloe as well. Who are they going to tag over to? Cottesloe in second place. So Michael Booth is a little wave. He's going to sneak through. So all the rest of the field are going to cop this on the chest. Kent Jenkinson gets on, gets away clean. Hits that water hard. Dog oh, gets the back, gets knocked off his ski. That was a tricky start. Booth is gone. Sereno is gone. Northcott, they need to get through this one. Can they get through it? Pushes hard. Yes, he does. City of Perth back on again. Kent Jenkinson punches through. 
Oh, great racing. I think it's going to be the minor medals, though. Sorrento have put distance between first and second. Michael Booth, they won't narrow that gap. So Sorrento in the lead. Northcott in second. Trig Island third. Cottesloe fourth. City of Perth in fifth. So I think you're right, Mick. I think racing for the minor medals, although there are some good technicians out there on the ski, but Booth is the best. He's one of the best in the world, and he's going to be the one of the best on show today. So they're going to hand over to Patrick Ear and to Joshy Windsor, I reckon it will be. So first at the moment by the cans, as you can see, is Michael Booth. He'll go around that red and yellow can and turn for home. Second place at the moment is Northcott being monstered here. It's the rest of the competitors. So Trig Island have pushed right up there now. They're in second, uh, probably third and fourth. Get a bit of a check around there. So Reese Baker, he's probably fifth or sixth at the moment, but he's paddled them right back into this. The handover will happen. I get a lift. Stephen Bird has gone, 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 and he is chasing hard. Michael Booth has not stopped his rating. In fact, he's passed paddling faster than the waves can take him, to be honest. So Michael Booth, captain of the surf team, to coach of the surf team. He wants to take home this six-person tablin to be kings of the beach. Yeah, tremendous paddle there by Michael Booth from Sereno. That's a very, very convincing lead with just three legs to go. The second ski paddler, Josh Winter, it's going to be. But here comes the chase pack, the minor medals. That's where the interest is going to be. Kent Jenkinson has had a sterling paddle. Got knocked off at the start, got clipped by a wave right on the shoreline. He's got himself back on, oh, but coming from the clouds as well. So here we go. We'll see them as they hit the beach. They've got the run to the transition. Out. Josh Windsor is away for Sorrento. Now the foot race is on. Ken Jenkinson chasing hard. Trig in the lead. Reese Baker storming home. Big run for him. It's almost going to be a simultaneous tag for these ski paddlers. Deep water makes it hard to get going. Sarsen needs to push through. Humble needs to push through. Stephen Bird as well. City of Perth having a few troubles in the break. You don't want to give paddlers of that calibre a bit of a head start. Bit of a backwash needed. That's what they're going to get as well. So Sorrento though, absolute daylight between first and second. So the minor medals is the only place you can be at the moment because out in front is Joshy Windsor and he is paddling a flyer. His rating is right up. Although Dan Humble and Brennan Sarson, and Stephen Bird are, are hunting him, they're closing, but they're not going to close fast enough. And this will be one of the greatest wins for Sorrento. There's still two and a half legs to go, but let's put our glasses down now, ladies and gentlemen. Sorrento will have this one absolutely nailed to the board and they'll be drinking from the cup of magic tonight because it's theirs to win and for theirs to keep. So Sorrento, Josh wins up. Working the ocean. He's on a little bit of a lift at the moment. And he's going to work that until it becomes almost a wave. The chase pack, though, coming. Dan Humble picks up a bit of a run. But Josh Windsor, he's going to make his way into the beach. He's had a, a great paddle. The chase pack's coming. Stephen Bird from North Cottesloe just pulling ahead of Dan Humble. Joshy Windsor gets those legs pumping, urged on by his teammates. Turns the can, turns the flag, sprints across. Humble with in some trouble. Needs to get the nose up, leans back, does. So there's going to be three hitting the beach at the same time. Ethan Jackson's on a wave now as well. So City of Perth not out of this either. Stephen Bird now sprinting for second place for the North Cottesloe. Humble there for Trig Island. Sarson as well. But it is. Sorrento and Patrick Eli. We just see saw him in an epic iron final. Andrew Moselle now for Trig Island. He's heading out as well. Ethan Jackson looking for the tags. He had a good transition as he always does. Hands on to Jules Fredenay. Fredenay will have the sights of Moselle in his sights. Okay, so first place at the moment, Patrick Ely for the mighty Sorrento Surf Life Saving Club. Kai Marketo from Trig Island. Second place, Andrew Moselle. 
third place then the north cop archie davis he's paddling strong there so who will hold on so from those three paddlers there'll only be two medals there's one more leg to go and patrick illy lays down and puts it down and says no way not today this is our day i'm going to hang hand over to brendan Naylor and we're going to bring it home and that'll be ours for the keeping. But the minor medals, oh, the Mandarin Moselle goes straight past Marquetto. He just looks at him and says, come on, young blood. What do you think you're doing? You're just laying there. I'm on my knees and I'm gone. I want to make a race of this. So Moselle in second place now. Kai Marquetto third. Archie Davis fourth. That's where it's coming from, I think, at this stage. It won't be from anywhere else. Oh, don't discount the Frenchman. Jules Frenonet just going around the apex camp for the city of Perth in fifth place. If you can pick up a little bit of a runner... Patrick Eloy is in the wave zone. Nothing coming for him, though. So Fred and I can get a little bit of luck. Bit of a lift coming from Marquetto now. Andrew Moselle in second place. Marquetto in third. Davis from Northcott in fourth. Here comes Jules Fredonet, though. If he can get himself on a bit of a wave, he'll hand on to Matt Collis, the final board paddler. But it is going to be Sorrento. Patrick Eloy sprinting around the flags in that final transition run. And he will hand on the tag to Brendan Naylor. Naylor, now he goes. Fredonay now from the clouds on that yellow board. Needs to pull over it. Can he? Just can't. That might have been City's medal just there. Moselle is still in second place. Davis. Oh, Fredonay gives it again. The second effort. Marquetto's there. So City of Perth have got themselves back up into medal contention. Oh, what a race. Great finishing here. So Moselle's paddled the B team into second place at the moment. Third place is the A team, Kai Marquetto from Trig Island. Jules Fredonet is absolutely flying. Who's the hand over to? Kelton Mulvo. We know how he goes. Joel Dodd is in the water. But don't discount the Matty Collis show. It's been a show of magic. Will Matty Collis hold on? Will he get there? There's fourth, fifth, sixth in the water now. We are flying here, ladies and gentlemen. And... No, no one's going to catch the leading machine. That is Brendan Naylor on that blue board. But Kelton Mulvey is just going to go past Joel Dotty as it stands here. Matt Collis, what can he do? Will it be bronze? Will it be silver? Will it be fourth? Oh, tight racing. Tight racing. Sorrento have got it. Naylor, he's heading around the cans. So they are completely fine. But the minor medals, that's where the interest is going to be. Dotty. Mulvey from Trig Island, Matt Collis from the City of Perth. There are three paddlers. You could throw a blanket over them, but only two medals to be given out. Which way is it going to go? But at the moment, this is Sorrento's race. It has been from the start. They have been absolutely dominant in this open male taplin. Dotty hanging on. Collis trying to stick in there as well. Mulvey as well. Mulvey, we saw him. He was second for the entire race in the open mile board. He can paddle aboard. So can Dotty. Now they pin their ears back. They get a bit of a run. Dotty and Mulvey as we see Sereno. Brendan Naylor hops off the blue board to the applause and the cheers and the adulation of his, of his teammates. And they will take it out. But all the interest is in the back. Here they come. Matt Collis is on a bit of a run. It looks like he might have just snuck himself past uh, Mulvey. Dotty is still there in the lead. Wave now coming from Mulvey. It's going to be another foot race. Oh, here we go. Sereno have got this wrapped up. The medals are going to come between Kelly Mulvey, Matt Collis and Dotty. Collis is up and running. Mulvey's up and running. Mulvey, who's going to get the inside line? Looks like it might be the City of Perth. Matt Collis is in second and he will hang on. So a silver medal to the City of Perth. Great racing for Trig Island to pick up the bronze. And also the fourth place through Dotty. But it was Sorrento, Sorrento, Sorrento. Dominant victory. City of Perth picking up the silver. And Trig Island third. And you saw when they started that swim where Byron just got caught behind. He got to the can, climbed all over the top of the other swimmers, got through and then opened the lead. And then that's it. That was it. That was the winner. He's the one who set it up for him, that first swim, Byron Kimber. And once he got his clear water, he was on, on fire. And the opportunity for him to bring home gold for his new club um, is just wonderful to see these young guys racing so, so heartily for Sorrento. They're pretty happy about it, pretty smiley about it. Why wouldn't you be winning the last event of the day? And a good opportunity for them to showcase their skills in front of everyone. Hugs plenty around. Yeah, terrific. And you can just... See him down on the beach and, and how much it means to them. Um, as we've talked about, the 
the individual nature of the sport. I mean, you can link up with, with five of your very good mates and, and win a gold medal. They'll be talking about that tonight as we see the minor places coming across. City of Perth, Jack Blom anchoring the city team. Chig there as well. But Cam, you are down with the winners. Sorrento boys, fantastic course. Sorrento, Sorrento, Sorrento. They leap from the start, finish. Fantastic team effort. Yeah, 100%. Started with Byron, great swim from him. Then Joe held it into Boothy and Josh. Once just kept the lead. And then Paddy handed over to me. I got lucky. Oh, you didn't get luck. <laughs> lucky. You had a fantastic over the water there and just solid all the way through. Bragging rights, mate. A couple of beers tonight. Enjoy yourself. Oh, definitely a couple. Maybe not so quiet one, but we'll be right. <laughs> fantastic. Well done, Sorrento one. And while I got you guys, Hayden and Mick, fantastic call throughout the afternoon, guys. You guys rock. Great call. Well, Mick Collis, that was a wonderful race there by the mighty Sorrento team. They're really happy with each other. Uh, and why wouldn't they be winning the, the crowning, showing the depth of their club that they have? They're pretty proud of each other. Um, and we should go through to a, a point score. What do you think, Mick? We'll go through a point score and see how we're rolling. Because it's wonderful to win a race, but let's see who won the one overall. So, in third place, provisional of course, because we've still got the boats to come through. City of Perth on 404 points. In second place, they've tried hard, they've led all most of the summer, but we're overtaken today. Sorrento on 800 points. And our leading club for 2024 is Trig Island on 864 points. Well done to Trig. They've uh, been really dominant over these last couple of days and there they do sit on top of the ladders. But we've still got plenty of action here from the 2024 SunSmart WA Surf Lifesaving Championships as we head to the Northern Arena to the boats. We've got the reserve female, the reserve male, the open male, and the Open Female Finals to come. Gold medals on the line. So plenty of action. That does wrap up the water events here. But the boat's still to go. And some uh, amazing racing that we have been witness to. Very hard to, to pick a favourite, Hayden. But have you got one? Northcott or City. One of the two. As a favourite, yeah. The events today. I think North Cot yesterday, um, Johan Szymanski. Of course. <laughs> so I was uh, dreaming watching the sky on the horizon, Mick, so I wasn't listening properly. So I was just, um, I just kind of guessed something that you might have been talking about. But let's, let's bring us back to where we're at. And I know we're going to run, go to the boats, which will be so exciting. We've got the finals coming up of the boats with a special commentary here being provided. And... About, about to get underway for the reserve female final. Sorrento sunken treasures in lane one. Fremantle Angels in two. Northcott Calypso in three. Northcott Impact in four. Mullaloo Mermaids in five. And the Mullaloo Marlins in six. Our special guest, Jeff Wilson, we will hand it over to you to talk us through this very important race, the reserve female surf boat final. Thanks, Mick and Hayden. Um, just witnessed some uh, fantastic racing down here and some great calling from you guys. Um, that uh, Taplin was something else, wasn't it? Sereno were perfect. OK, we're up to the um, now the northern end of the beach, the um, heavy transport department. And um, in lane one here, we've got the Sereno sunken treasures. They're a crew made up of mostly under-19 rowers um, who have been performing extremely well this year with... Um, their sweep, Luke Ferrier, who's done a fragmental, uh, great job with them. In lane two, we've got the Fremantle Angels, um, and they are swept by Paul Hardy. And this this crew actually represented WA over at the ASRL Championships in Lawn. In lane three, we've got Northcott Calypso, 
This is this crew here is swept by Andrew Pope. In lane five, we've got Mullaloo. Oh, sorry, in lane four, Northcott Impact swept by David Hunt. In lane five, Mullaloo Mermaids, and they are swept by Richard Kalman. Oh, sorry, um, they are not. They're Stephen Part and Richard Kalman is the sweep of the Mullaloo Marlins. Conditions uh, have just a little bit of movement in the water here today, as um, would have been evident in the earlier races. And the wind has just come up a little bit. There they go. We've got a start down there in the northern arena. And it looks like Sorrento Sunken Treasures at this end and Northcott in the centre of the field there have got away to a good start. Thanks, Bella. Yes, yeah, so on this southern side, it is the... Sorrento Sunken Treasures have got an early start. Northcott Calypso also there getting away early. So great start. All these boats away clean and off the beach. They've been sitting around waiting for the start. Plenty of nerves which they've had to put uh, to the side. Sorrento that is there on screen now. The Sunken Treasures of Sorrento. Northcott Calypso in second at the moment as they make their way out to about the halfway point on this race. The Mullaloo Marlins with a little bit of work to do in the early stages of this race. But heading out, we can still see that is the Sorrento Sunken Treasures in the green caps halfway out. So Willow, at this point in time, what, what have you got the sweep saying to the, to the, to, to the girls? At this point in time, they've just gone through the gate cans. They're coming up to about three-quarter distance. Uh, it's a good time to really just settle and just focus on their technique. Um, they're probably feeling the pinch a little bit right now. Um, and now's the time to make sure they don't make any mistakes. Um, just keep the rhythm and push through this part until they get into their turn. And then the race basically starts again once they get out of that turn and get onto that first run. But the sweeps, yeah, at this stage, we'll be just encouraging the crews just to concentrate on their technique and their form. So as we're heading out, it looks like the Fremantle Angels look like they may be the first to turn the cans. We'll try and pick them up. Looks like Northcott Impact, it looks like. There's the shot there now, you can see. Looks like the Northcott Impact are the first team to turn around those cans. Looks like they're possibly the Fremantle Angels and Northcott Calypso with them as well. But Northcott Impact, they've got themselves out and around and they are now on their way back. Northcott Calypso and Fremantle Angels in the middle of screen. But on the right hand side of your screen, that is the Northcott Impact. They are in the lead. Northcott Calypso in probably second or eight, probably pretty tight there with the Fremantle Angels. But Northcott Calypso, they are the ones to beat as they make their way home. Yes, coming up to the gate cans now, they'd be chasing every run they can get. You can just see the rating lift there for a couple of strokes to maximise the, the boat run on the runs and the nose drops down. Um, right now, the sweeps would be uh, really encouraging their crews just to try and keep that rhythm, but uh, also be well aware of those skates when the back of the boat picks up, the nose drops a bit to uh, really finish, into the, in, finish your stroke into the bow, keep the nose down and keep the boat running. There's a good run. Good run there from um, Mer the Mullaloo Mermaids. Have brought them up into probably equal second spot, I'd say. We've got a row of three, Mick, by the look of it, for second. Yeah, really tight finish. So Northcott Impact, they are the ones in the lead. This is the Fremantle Angels are the ones on screen, but the Impact are the ones that are in the front. Sorrento Sunken Treasure, they're on the southern side. So there is a line of three. The Sorrento Sunken Treasure, the Fremantle Angels, and also Northcott Calypso. But Northcott Impact... They are going to take this race out by the angle that we've got. The Sunken Treasure, though, from Sorrento. In fact, that's Mermaids at the far end. Fremantle Angels trying to finish hard. Northcott Impact, though, will take out the race. Northcott Calypso. And the, it looks like it might be Fremantle Angels in second place. Calypso third from Northcott. Mullaloo fourth. They... Got some good runs on their way home once they turn that can, but Northcott Impact 
they were the first round of cans and very hard to beat once they got that uh, on those skates, Willow. Yeah, very impressive row there. They were well clear the uh, Northcott impact it was in lane four, I believe. Um, they looked like they got that race. Um, absolutely, uh, it was clear water behind for second, third and fourth, but it looked like uh, it may have been the Fremantle Angels with Northcott impact uh, coming in there as well uh, and the Mulaloo Mermaids in fourth. But um, good racing. Um, it's about 360, 367 metres, I think the measurement was, to the turning cans this morning from uh, knee depth water. So good length race, probably about somewhere between 3.45 and 4 minutes for the, um, for the reserve crews. Um, the open crews will probably cover that distance a little bit quicker. But um, I think up next will be the reserve mail. So in the reserve mail, we'll just consult the... So not far away from a start in the Reserve Mail Surf Boats final. Northcott Impacts taking out the Reserve female crew. Reserve's always a bit of an unknown to get some crews to come out of the woodwork. Having done some secret training just away from all the, uh, all, all the other teams. So can be a bit of a lottery, but City Black, they'll be in amongst it. Multiple past winners. Johnny Foster rose in this crew. This is his 43rd consecutive state titles in the boats, which could be a national record, surely. The Swanee Nedlands headless horsemen. They're hunting a, a, a medal. The City Gondola, they are the defending state champions. Recently caught the weight of the carnival away with the carnival the a uh Sony surf rowers league that's where grant true abandoned ship as they were coming in northcott charmers probably the ones to beat so lane one will be the city of perth um gondolas Just try and pick up, try and pick up the lanes.
Reserve grade men's final, we've got Northcott in lane one, swept by Ian Clark, that is the source, Northcott source in lane one. We've got City Gondolas swept by Grant True in lane two. We've got Northcott Chalmers in lane three, swept by Andrew Pope. And we go across to Swanbourne, Netherlands, Netherlands Headless Oarsman with Tim Whitehurst sweeping. Then we're on to Scarborough Sharks with Wayne, should know his name. Uh, and then on to Mullaloo Stormbringers, Duncan Jamel. At the moment, out through the gate cans, it looked like it might have been Northcott Chalmers in lane three. Looked like they've got the lead. Uh, closely followed by City of Perth Gondolas and Northcott Source in lanes one and two. Then we go across to the Headless Oarsman. They've got a bit of work to do. They're a little bit behind. Scarborough's up there along with Mullaloo. They're round about. They're probably a length out of it at the moment. So it looks like the three crews on the southern end are in control at the moment. Northcott just starting to come up onto their turn, just starting to make into their last ten strokes, making to start the approach to the turn. They look like they're going to go around first. And so them first, Gondola's second, the source third and Mullaloo is around just beyond, or just with those actually. They're well in the picture there at Mullaloo up on the far end, the far northern end. They're going pretty well. Um, in the middle, it's still Northcott source. Look like they've got the lead. And I'll hand over to Mick. Yeah, thanks, Willow. So that was a, a great back end of that first leg there by the Mullaloo Stormbringers on the right-hand side of screen. They are, well, it looked like they were out of it, but they're now right up there in the lead. Northcott Chalmers in the centre of screen, probably in the lead. And also the Scarborough Sharks have fought back really well. City Gondola with a little bit of work to do. They turned in second place, but they've just dropped off the pace. So at the moment, it is the Northcott Chalmers centre screen. We'll get to see it here when they cross this marker's line. It's always hard with the, the angles that we're picking up. So it is going to be the Northcott Chalmers are in the lead. I would say the Mullaloo Stormbringers, City of Perth Gondola, and also the Sharks. You could throw a line. And also Northcott Source as well. So it's going to be it depends on who can urge their crews to lift that rating and bring it home. There's no time to leave anything in the tank. This is the final of the reserve male surf boats. Northcott Chalmers in the lead. City of Gondola, they're working hard as well, but the Stormbringers at the top of your screen, they're hanging in there as well. Here comes Northcott Source, though. They lift the rating. They get a bit of a lift. Northcott Chalmers, they are in the lead. It looks like the Stormbringers, and it looks like the Sharks might be one, two, three at the moment. Hard to see on the angle, but it looks like it's going to be the Northcott Chalmers are going to take it out. It looks like the Stormbringers will finish for second. And the Sharks, oh, it's going to be a line drawn between them, the Gondola, and also Source. But no doubt about the winner, Northcott Chalmers taking out the reserve male surf boat. I think the Stormbringers, will they might have picked up second. Third place, too close to call. Yeah, once again, a great row there from uh, the Northcott Chalmers in, uh, in lane four. It led basically from start to finish, so a great row by them. Uh, the Stormbringers, that was a great row, a great turn and came out of the turn really well. Very strong row home and uh, they look like they've picked up the silver. And possibly from here it looked like maybe the Scarborough Sharks in third place. That's, that's a good result for them. Um, and then we had Northcott Source and the City Gondolas probably for uh, a fourth, fighting it out for fourth and fifth place there. Uh, a little bit unlucky. I'm not sure what happened to the Swanbourne Netherlands headless oarsman there, but they uh, they were trailing the field a bit. So whether they had a bit of trouble on the start, I'm not sure. But um, we're down to the last two races now, Mick. This is the these are the big ones. Um, the A grade, the fastest rowers uh, in our state in the open open men's. It looks like it's lining up first and we'll finish with the open women is that correct uh, meant to be female first okay well that if that's the case we should have them you got them so we'll just run through the field there we've got the city tomatoes swept by todd bowler um, lane one 
Lane two, we've got Sorrento Genesis. Um, lane three, City Sunrise, swept by Grant True. He'll, he's been busy. Sorrento Genesis swept by Luke Ferry, and it looks like Luke's got his wife rowing in that crew as well. So um, that's a very good, very good team there. Northcott Glossies with David Hunt, and Northcott Calibre with Jeff Jeff Haggerty is the sweep of Northcott Calibre. Very good crew. Um, the form here has been uh, it's been pretty well spread through the, the rounds. The, City Sunrise have been performing well. Northcott Calibre, Northcott Glossies, Sereno Genesis. Can't count them out either. And City Tomato. So it looks like we're lining up for a pretty good race here. Um, conditions, the wind's just picking up a little bit more there. So a little bit more white water, a little bit more um, chop on the water. You can see coming through from left to right on the screen. Um, and there we have our crews in the water now waiting for a start. The starter's flag is up. Just waiting for a start. So we'll just run through those starters again. City Tomatoes in lane one. Sorrento Genesis, lane two. City Sunrise in lane three. Northcott Glossies in lane four. And Northcott Caliber in lane five. A lot will depend on the start here, who gets a good start. I'm sure the starter is taking his time, making sure that all the bows are down before he uh, pulls the gun. Or well, it's a hooter these days, not a gun anymore. But there'll be a few nerves going through the crews as they're waiting. Flag still up, means the line is straight. Flagman makes sure all the, all the crews are in line, that no one's trying to uh, get an advantage by creeping out. I don't think they would today anyway, because it's a little bit choppy just off the shore. So there's a few bows still rising there. You'll have to wait for it all to settle. Over to you, Mick. You can call the start. Thanks, Willow. So the Northcott Calibre there, the favourites heading into this race. A new women's accommodation this year, Jess Walsh and Hayley Clark. They've come through the junior grades to make their way into the Opens, and we are away at the moment, Sorrento Genesis, look, they got away pretty well in those green cap. Second in lane number two there. Lane number one, the City Tamatoa. They also got away and also the Northcott Calibre on the, uh, really the top of the screen. But it looks like lane one, City Tamatoa and Northcott Calibre. Lane one and lane five, probably the two to get away well. City Sunrise also a good start, not to be discounted. City Sunrise, the state under 23 team, open short course champions. Not a bad side, and as I mentioned, the Calibre, Haley and Jess, as I mentioned, Haley, uh, Jess Walsh and Haley Clark, they're both second-generation Northcott rowers, Sweep, Jeff Hegarty, as they make their way out towards those marker cans. It's a long race. This is the Open Female Surf Boat Final. It looks like Lane 3, the City Sunrise. They've got a terrific start, being bookended by City Tamatoa and Northcott Calibre. The City Tamatoa on the left-hand side, Northcott Calibre on the right-hand side of the screen. City Sunrise in the middle, just to the left of the Sunrise is the Scarborough Genesis and the Northcott Glossies. That is the Genesis on your screen at the moment. City Sunrise on the right. Might be just slightly ahead. It's always very hard to see from the pictures, but as we do see them go out, it does look like the Sunrise, Tamatoa and the Northcott Calibre are the leading three teams. Genesis and the Glossies just tucked in about a half a boat length behind. Jeez, it's tight racing, Willow. It's very close out there in front, and uh, they're pushing into a bit of bit of chop out there now. It's sort of slowed things down a little bit, but they're um, making their way up probably about 20 strokes out from the turn. I'd say at the moment it looks like Northcott Calibre with Jeff Hegarty uh, sweeping them. Look like they've just got a lead coming up to their turn. Not far behind them, City Sunrise, City Tamatoa, and the Northcott Glossies and Sorrento Genesis also in the mix there at the moment. And as we watch now, we see Northcott coming up onto their turn first, clearly in front. Um, a good length and a half. No one's even gone into their turn. Second crew in will be City Sunrise. 
So they've got a bit of work to do to catch up on the way home. And we see the Glossies, Tamatoa and Genesis. Tamatoa and Genesis turning together. So it looks like our medal winners are going to come from the Northcott Calibre, City Sunrise and City uh, Northcott Glossies at this stage. That's the way it's sitting with Sereno Genesis and City Tamatoes just a little bit further back. But right at the moment, it looks like... Uh, Northcott are going to go for the trifecta here. They've won the last two races. They're looking pretty good in this one, Mick. Yeah, so Northcott Calibre, they are in the lead and comfortably in the lead. It's a, it's a good crew. The Northcott Calibre, Hayley Clark, Jessica Knox Rafferty, Alexandra Ruff, Jess Walsh, as I mentioned it, and uh, Jeff Hegarty, the sweep, the Northcott Calibre in the lead. They are being pressed, though. City Sunrise, not going to press it, but they're pressing for the silver medal. The City Sunrise in the middle. Looks like they might have just snuck ahead of the Northcott Glossy, but it was the Northcott Calibre. They got around that can so quickly. Just a couple of strokes. The inside rowers put their oars in. The outside spun it around. They're picking up a bit of a run now to bring them home. It's a great shot on the overhead. You can see them at the top of screen. The Northcott Calibre are a long way in front. The City Sunrise in the middle lane. They are storming home as well. They're on a bit of a runner. The Calibre stuck in some dead water. They need to get the rating back up. They're going to be fine. City Sunrise chasing hard. Northcott Glossies, they're not out of it yet either. The City Sunrise digging deep. They're on a bit of a run. Can they pull over this? Yes, they can. That will take them through to the beach. But the, uh, the Glossies still coming though from Northcott. But it will be the City Sunrise. They will take out the silver medal, swept by Grant Troop. But Northcott Calibre taking out the gold. City Sunrise, the silver medal, and the Northcott Glossies picking up the bronze medal. Provisional only. We'll wait for the judges, but certainly Willow Northcott Calibre just too strong today. Yeah, they went up another level there in that final uh, in the heats today. They've been good. They've been around the front of the race. But uh, in that performance there, they just went up another notch and uh, and they've claimed the gold medal. Um, so congratulations to the Northcott Calibre. Great row. Um, so we're down to one more race to go, um, the Open Men. And we have five starters, four starters in that. So... Um, It'll be a bit easier for us to call, Mick. We don't have quite so many sweeps to go through. But, um, yeah, that's uh, coming to the end of a, in the surf boat season in WA. There will be some of these crews going over to the Australian titles over on the Sunshine Coast, I'd imagine. Um, but uh, it's been a, a pretty fair season by these crews and, and a good turnout of crews today at the state titles, um, or over the weekend, I should say. Um, the, uh, with yesterday being the boat relay, the lifesaver relay and the under 23 and under 19 divisions were decided yesterday um, so yeah, it all comes down to the open men now to finish off our season So the final race of what has been a, a wonderful 2024 SunSmart WA Surf Lifesaving Championships, the four crews in, it, in lane one, the North Cot Shantyman in lane two, the Frio Burritos. Number three, the Northcott Uppies. And in lane four, the City Red Toddies. The Northcott Uppies, they're the clear favourites going to this one. They're the state team, current Australian reserve grade champions. An unchanged combination since then. Josh Senzio in the bow. He's Mr. April in the 2023 Fireman's Charity Calendar. He's got a couple of spares in the car if anyone does want to pick one up. Spa, sweep, Mark McDermott, been around the club for a long time. The Fremantle Burritos, they're a, a challenger for this race today. The Northcott Shantyman, they're racing for a podium. Under-19s crew, they've been together since December. They're building really, really well. And again, a, a show of the depth of the rowing down there at Northcott. And then the City Red Toddies had a great start to the season. A bit racked by injuries, so they've called in good old, the good old boys, Damien and Damon, who were winning state titles 20 years ago. So the veterans suiting up for the City Red Toddies. So the Northcott Chandamin in one, Frio Burritos in two, Northcott Uppies in three, and the City Red Toddies in lane four. And Willow, the Uppies, uh, clear favourites? I would say so, Mick. Um, they've been the, the form crew. It, earlier in the season, it was the Uppies and the, the uh, City Hot Toddies. But as you've uh, pointed out, the uh, Hot Toddies have had a couple of injuries and had to call on a couple of... Uh, couple of creaky old veterans there to uh, 
to come out and, and fill in those spots. They've done a good job to make it through to the final. But, um, yes, the Uppies are an impressive crew. Uh, also, I would say um, the Shantyman, Dave Hunt's crew, have been performing extremely well. They are our state short course champions, an under-19 crew, so they've been performing extremely well. Um, and the other one is Fremantle Burritos, who have had some good results too this year with Michael Cameron at the helm there. A uh, very experienced sweep. Um, has been in several Australian finals. Uh, so he's got the he's got the burritos um, fired up at the right time to uh, to perform well in this final. Um, yeah, once again, the conditions haven't changed too much. It's probably, as predicted, probably about 14 knots of southwesterly. Um, that was what it was looking like uh, earlier today, and that sort of happened. Swell's still, still fairly small. Um, but just enough there to give a cruise a bit of a knock on the way out if they uh, if they don't start well. So yeah. So uh, Mick, uh, what for you now? Over to the Australians for you. Yeah, well, I will. We'll head across uh, with the with the city crew. It'll be great to see a lot of West Australians heading over there. But yeah, always looking forward to the to the Yachties. Nice to get away on a bit of a holiday, and um, and it'll be great to see how some of these competitors we saw how well they went here in in WA. It's great for them to get across and test themselves. At a national level, bigger field, different beach, different conditions. So they've got to keep waking up early and training hard for the next sort of month or so. And uh, and I'm sure they'll enjoy Mad Monday up there on the Sunshine Coast once their final races are over. And I'm sure some of these boat rowers will be looking forward to a, a sherbet or two at the end of today. The open male surf boat final about to get underway. There are the crews in the water looking at left to right on your screen. The City Red Toddies. On the left-hand side, the Northcott Uppies, second from that right. The Frio Burritos centre screen at the moment. And then the Northcott Shantyman on the right-hand side. The Shantyman, Ben Colvin, Angus Park, Harry Staines and Jack Trevina rowing. And David Hunt is the sweep for the Shantyman. For the Burritos, Michael Cameron, Brad Cox, James Curry, Xavier Mongolin and Alex Vukovic. That is the crew with those. The Northcott Uppies, as we mentioned, they are the favourites going to this race. Willis Armstrong, Rowan Bigland, Mark McDermott, the sweep, William Moore and Josh Senzio. And for the City Red Toddies, James Abbott, Toddy Bowler, Damon Hanson, Cahoy, Damien Kelly and Jack Redrop. So we are waiting for a start. Open male surf boat final for 2024. Well, these are the big boys of the beach. You think your food bill's big. You should see what these people go through. Yes, Mick, and they, you did allude to it a, a while ago. They will be looking forward to a beverage. It's uh, been thirsty work today, and uh, they do call it blood, sweat and beers, uh, surf boat racing. That's, uh, it's been born and bred on that. But, um, yeah, in the meantime, these guys will have their focus right on one thing at the moment, and that's getting a good start. Yeah, and, well, you know, well, the, the uppies are the favourites. You know, these other teams, a simple mistake by that Northcott crew, and it, it opens the door wide up. So... Plenty of pressure on them being the favourites. I think they'll be confident, but they can't be too confident. Still got a long way to go. Anything that happened, we've seen some of the runs that the athletes have picked up, and they are away. And straight away, we talked about the errors. Northcott, the shantyman in lane one, in all sorts of trouble there. And it looks like the whistle might have gone. Are we doing a restart or are we still going? Because the Frio Burritos, look, they're, they're heading out. They're racing. So controversy here in the open male surf boat race. So this is what we were just talking about. You might go into a race as a favourite, but if there's these little errors that can creep into crews when the nerves pick up, and we saw it there, the, the, the Northcott Shannon in, in lane one, at the right hand side of the screen it's like they were just stuck stuck on the sand willow yeah it seems uh the um as they started the the water ran out there at their end of the beach and um and they were sitting on the sand there was uh, they weren't going anywhere um so common sense has prevailed and the uh the starters uh, called them back and that'll take them a couple of minutes now to reset themselves those crews that road out to sea will have a bit of lactic acid in their legs no doubt and they'll just want to settle down again um, before they 
face the uh, starter's gun again. Um, but yeah, it's been uh, it's been a good season over here. Northcott once again uh, are showing their strength as a uh, surf boat club, which has been the case for many years. And they once again they've produced the goods here today. And uh, I think I think they won the under 19 males yesterday and the under 23 male. So they had two two gold medals yesterday, and so far. They've got another three today, so that's uh, pretty good going by Northcott. Um, the other crews, yeah, really good to see Fremantle. I believe they won the boat relay yesterday, which is an impressive performance. They've been building over the years, and they've got some real depth in that club now, so that's fantastic. Sorrento with Luke Ferrier has done a brilliant job up there of uh, getting those crews up and running and, and performing at the highest level with the under-19 females. Um, and also good to see Secret Harbour here and Quinns. Uh, so some of our more distant clubs, I guess, um, but all turning up for the state titles, which is good to see. Um, and it was good to see Scarborough back in there too. They've been a little bit light on for crews in the last couple of years, but um, they, it looks like unconfirmed, but it looks like they got the bronze medal in the reserve mail, which is a good, good turnout for them. Um, so it is going to take a little bit to get set here again, Mick. I can see a couple of bows out there again now. Um, the starter's going to be a bit nervous this time around, do you reckon? <laughs> yeah, I think some of the crews might be a bit nervous as well after that little bit of a start. This time the Northcott Shannon actually put their boat in the water as opposed to starting on the sand, going out to uh, where it's actually floating, which is a, a good start by them. So the Shannyman on the right-hand side of the screen, Frio Burritos in lane two, Northcott Uppies in three, the favourites, and then the City Red Toddies at the top of the screen. All the boats are now in the water, and we are waiting for a start. We had a false one a couple of minutes ago. The flag is up. Gun is still down. Flag up, waiting for the gun to be lifted. All boats in the water. You just see the start, just trying to get an, an even start where no crew is disadvantaged by a wave about to break or being caught in some white water. Looks pretty even now, so we shouldn't be too far away. Bit of side swirl you can see just heading across to hit the uppies. Wave coming through. Yeah, tough conditions for the starter. Another wave coming. The City Red Toddies look like they're in pretty shallow water at the moment. Hopefully they've learnt from the Northcott Shantyman. Flag up, guns down. As opposed to here with Hayden Marchetto with guns out. Gunners up, flag is up, waiting for the start. And away, and looked like the uh, the Northcott Uppies, the favourites, got away very quickly, as did the Burritos. Also the City Red Toddies, impressive as well. So the City Red Toddies and the Northcott Uppies probably getting the best of the starts. The Shannyman after their full start also away pretty well. And Frio Burritos in the middle. So the sweeps urging for some speed and some rating to get these big boats moving. And then Willow, how far do they go before they just break into their normal race pace? Yeah, thanks, Mick. Usually uh, probably 15 to 20 strokes. They'll be um, maybe a little bit shorter for a couple and then they'll lengthen out and get into their rhythm. Um, maybe part of the way out, depending on where they're sitting in the race, the sweep might call for a 10-stroke effort just to uh, try and move them up in the field or move them further away if they are in front. Um, right at the moment, though, they'd be, um, they'd be transitioning into their, into their long, steady rowing which uh, will take them out to about three-quarter distance out to the boys. A um, bit of bounce there. You can see some of the bows popping up now, so there is a bit of chop out there. Um, right at the moment, it's a pretty good race. The uppies look like they may have the lead right at the moment. Yep, they've definitely got the lead at the moment, and um, we're probably about oh, a bit 25 strokes, I'd reckon, maybe 20 to 25 to the turn. I'll leave that to you, Mick, to call the turn, but at the moment, we've got a good race. 
Yeah, we certainly do. So the, the Northcott Uppies are definitely in the lead. The Northcott Shantyman, probably in second place. City Red Toddies in third. Frio Burritos in fourth. As you can just see the turning cans just there in front of the crews. This will be the best way to judge it. So look for the Northcott Uppies. They do go around first. So the Northcott Uppies are in the lead comfortably at the moment. It looks like the City Red Toddies and Northcott Shantyman pretty much level. Frio Burritos in there as well. So the Northcott Uppies at the moment in the lead, but you could throw a blanket over two, three, and four. The City Red Toddies on the right-hand side of screen, picking up a bit of a skate as they start to get away. The Frio Burritos have got around well on their turn, and the Northcott Shantyman probably just dropping off to fourth, had a bit of trouble getting around the can. Out in front, though, no problem at all for the Northcott Uppies. They are working their way back towards the beach. On the right-hand side, the City Red Toddies. That is the Uppies on screen you can see now on a nice little run for the Uppies. So the back, the, the podium finish, it's going to be the Northcott Uppies. They're certainly in the lead at the moment. City Red Toddies chasing hard. You can just see them on the right-hand side of the screen. The boat ebbing and flowing. They sink back as the swell goes. Then they get that nose down and they race down the skate. Great shot there from the drone. The North caught up, as you can see, but looking for two, three, and four. Those three boats all in a line. The City Red Toddies, the Frio Burritos, and the Northcott Shantyman on the left of screen. Frio Burritos might just have their nose into second place. City Red Toddies chasing hard as they pull down a run. Northcott Uppies, no problem from them at the moment, but the Frio Burritos really putting the pressure on the favourites. Bit of a run for the Frio Burritos. Here they come, coming right up now against the Northcott Uppies. Coming in close, it's going to be the Northcott Uppies. Frio Burritos working hard for second. City Red Toddies not out of it though. Northcott Uppies are going to take it. And the Burritos, they'll pick up the silver medal. And the fight now just on for the bronze between the Shannonman and the Toddies, but I think the Toddies are going to get it. But the Northcott Uppies, the favourites for this race, taking out the gold medal. Frio Burritos in second, City Red Toddies in third, and the Northcott Shannonman picking up fourth place. Willow, deserved gold medal for the Uppies. Definitely. Once again, they, um, they've been getting through the rounds nicely, but they picked up another, another cog there. They went up another gear and... Uh, they pulled away from the field there quite well. They led right from the start. Um, once again, an impressive row. Um, and, uh, yeah, North Cottesloe, four out of four today. That's, uh, you can't get much better than that. But uh, also good work by all of the other clubs that um, have got into the medals. And um, that's the conclusion. The medal presentation will happen and, uh, now. But uh, once again, great display of surfboat rowing from our crews here in WA. And... Uh, to any of those crews that are heading over to um, Alexandra Head and Maruchido or Malulaba to the Australian titles, uh, we wish them the best of luck. And, um, yeah, that's about it, Mick. Perfect. Thanks so much, Willow. Great to have you up in the box. So that does wrap up the boat racing. And it was Northcott too strong. What a wonderful carnival it's been. Surf Sports Summer. Sun Smart proudly presenting the state championships for 2024, Mick. Some highlights for yourself? Oh, Super Sunday. I mean, it really turned it on, didn't it? Um, look, for me, it was... I think Matt Collis had a really good day out today, picking up the open male swim board and the iron. Uh, that iron race was just fantastic. The four of them in the sprint finish. Any sprint finish is great. And we saw so many sprint finishes, and we, we spoke about it in commentary for races that are so long to come down to, you know, a half a metre, it's just fantastic racing. So, and, the, and then the Taplin, just that dominant performance by Sorrento in the open mile Taplin to wrap up the carnival. Um, yeah, look, really impressive. And it's some of the youngsters, uh, Annika Negus, what a talent. Just, just fantastic. And Olivia Doddy, just some of the fight that we see in these athletes when they know they might be fourth or fifth, but they just dig in and then, you know, 
take out gold medals. It's fantastic. Yeah, and just the power of uh, the Sorrento team there, in the men's in particular, they, they dominated that uh, six-person tap and they had many teams across many of the disciplines this weekend, but Trig Island in the women's, they were they were way dominant and uh, took everything before them. Not only from the young girls all the way, Macy Boivere in the in the 14 boards or 15 boards where she was quite a dominant. Her and Alicia Beanie went one two, but then you go to Eleanor Flowers and then you go to Annika Negus who won the Open Iron. So plenty of future uh, ahead of them as well as the girls. You know, in the ski relay they win the gold medal and they've been paddling for a long, long time. So uh, a rich tapestry of uh, of opportunity for them to continue to develop. Uh, it's great to have Delta Cross here. She's a, yeah, accomplished pool swimmer, but wonderful to see her uh, doing so well in her disciplines for North Cottesloe. Uh, but it has been an amazing summer. We've had the surf boats, we've had the uh, surf lives, we've had the life-saving competitions, we've had the R&R Carnival, we've had the Rescue Carnival, we've had the Beach Carnival. Culminates in the Youth and Open Water Carnival this weekend. And, well, there's some uh, surprising results, but... In the end, um, you know, one club will stand out on top. Being chased, the, the gap's being closed up and down the coast. You know, we've got Scarborough rebuilding their opportunities to their Surf Sports Arena. So Surf Sports alive and well in WA, and, and particularly in the females area where tradition has shown that females does drop off a little bit, but not at the moment. Whatever the clubs are doing in relation to Surf Sports is really paying dividends, particularly in the female movement. And that was one of the, the things you mentioned with the range of clubs, especially in some of those junior clubs. Uh, it's not just the big the big three or big four. We're seeing, you know, like from the city of Bunbury, we're turning up, Fremantle, Coogee. Like, it, it's great to see such a spread of clubs. And also one thing that really impressed me was the spirit that these athletes show, not, not only amongst themselves, but to their competitors. They're happy when their friends and their competitors do well. There's no bitterness. And it's, it's just a really nice community spirit. And it's a real credit to the athletes themselves for the way they do perform and the spirit in which they perform. And we've had international athletes come and join the clubs. We've had uh, young Yuzuku from uh, uh, Japan come and join in from a, a, a beach point of view with City of Perth. Then Drew Howes has come all the way from Wales. He took out a gold medal yeah, yesterday, so he's really pretty well. happy with that, the young Welshman. Uh, certainly benefiting from a beautiful summer. Glad there was a little bit of swell today. It did cause a bit of carnage. It did cause a bit of carnage. You know, Olivia Dotty was a standout. Uh, Paige Wood, she also paddled exceptionally well. Uh, Dan Humble, Reese Baker, they're the names that still keep coming on. Ken Jenkinson, what a carnival he had. Patrick Ealy had an amazing carnival also. So there's plenty to like about surf sports in WA. And in the next couple of weeks, they'll be heading over east to the uh, to the mighty sands of Queensland and the Sunshine Coast. And one thing I, I did like too, you, 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 you just touched on it briefly, is the, the cross code athletes. So we've got the, the pool swimmers coming across to race in surf. We've got the kayak paddlers. We've got Olympians racing out here. We, we talked about Luke Egger. The, the young uh, young gun, 21-year-old from the city of Perth. This was his first real summer in, on skis. He's just been picked the Australian kayaking team. Great for him to come down and mix up and, and learn from guys like Dan Humble, Reese Baker, Michael Booth, these really quality surf ski paddlers, and it's great for the kayak paddlers to be coming across and learning from those guys and competing here. Well, they all they, they do want this. So the Reese Bakers and Dan Humbles want Generation Next coming through. It doesn't matter what club. They're going to race as hard as possible because they still believe they want to be the number one paddler. So you've got to make, you've got to make young crew earn it. And earning it, they are at the moment with Patrick Ealy coming through. There's a young, the young Owen Barracla from, um, from also from Sorrento. He's, he's coming through. He's a, he's a young, giant paddler. So people on the move, learning from people who've done it before and getting their chance to represent their club so proudly. Yeah, so it has been a, a fantastic weekend of racing. It was Super Sunday today, Super Saturday yesterday. And a shout-out to Jules Fredenay too. Yesterday, the under-19 competitor just had a real day out, and uh, I think I might have caught up with him a little bit today, but certainly a, an athlete for the future, and, and you forget about athletes like him, only under-19, racing opens as well. But it's all about trying to be the champion club, Hayden. The points have been being building over a number of events, and you've got the final results. Yeah, so we'll start with just with this weekend alone, which is the water championships, and in f fifth place was Mullaloo. How could you go past the five peak from those oh, young boys? Yeah, how good. You know, they were a lucky bean... Uh, absolutely flying he paddled the ski he had a swim he did so well on the board also then you got donica murphy can swim can paddle does all the right moves and then Brody lee they won five gold medals yesterday across three different disciplines yeah. across two different age groups an amazing opportunity so mullaloo they finished fourth in for this weekend on in th fourth 
in, sorry, in fourth place is City of Perth on 259 points. Matty Collis, out, out. I know you can't speak. You're quite modest about him. He's a modest young man. But to win the three big ones today, that, that is an amazing outcome. Northcott, 270 points. Sorrento, second on 387 points. And the champion for this weekend is Trigger Island on 528. But what we will do is we'll go into the champion club um, points. And this, this, what this includes is the total points of life-saving, surf rescue, beach, surf boats, and then this weekend, which is a surf. So that's five different disciplines. Yeah. And we'll go through the numbers starting in fourth place, fifth place at the moment. Fifth place goes to Mullaloo on 296 points. North Cot, 418 points. And what a weekend of the white it was. City of Perth snuck home there in third place on 422 to points. No doubt their, their men and their women really lifting in that senior age groups. In second place, they've led for the last couple of weeks, but they just got overtaken on the last day of competition. Sorrento, and they should be super proud, 812 points. But our winners in a storming finish is Trig Island, our champion club for 2024 for Surf Life Saving WA is Trig Island on 871 points. Yeah, congratulations to Trig Island. And we got Jake Smith and Jay Shipway Carr accepting the flag. And we'll well done, Jake. Well done, Jazz. <laughs> and we'll grab a, a quick word once the photographs have been taken. So, Jazz, obviously a very proud moment for Trig. Yeah, super proud. We've got a few young ones with us this year, so it's been a really good turnout. And not only today, but, you know, to Beach States, we've got a lot of our water athletes down there and we've got a lot of life-saving members at the moment. So, yeah, just across the board, it's been fantastic to watch. And Jake, it's been a real battle between yourselves and Serrano. Nice to just to sneak home at the end. Yeah, I knew we had a good couple of races this weekend to get back over the past well, accumulation of everything so far. So it was good to see the battle. And then not just Serrano as well, but like across the board with all the clubs, I think everyone's coming up together, which is really pushing all the, the clubs to be the best they possibly can. So it's great to see. And, and Jazz, just before you go, Trig, it's been such a strong club for so long. What's the secret? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's just... All your friends are down here, so you kind of want to come down, you want to be around them. They're the people you want to hang out with. They're the people you want to push to be better. Um, and I think that's what we've got here down at Trig. We just all want to be have the best for each other and we all want to be, yeah, better. And but we just push each other pretty much, yeah. Well, it certainly paid up. So congratulations to Trig Island Champions for 2023-2024. Well, that just about winds up things here from what has been a wonderful weekend of the 2024 SunSmart WA Surf Life Saving Championships. Hayden, it's been terrific spending some time in the commentary box with you, witnessing some great moments. Yeah, we've seen some amazing moments. The one that lives with me is the Johan Szymanski smashing, smashing that swim yesterday in that under-19 tablet. He really took it apart in the swim, and I'll look forward to watching him in the future in the pool, no doubt. Uh, the, the young teams that, that ply their trade, Northcott, City of Perth, Cottesloe, wonderful opportunity for them to continue to uh, do the best that they can do. And, and a bit of swell this weekend is always good as the whip breeze comes in and uh, the Cubs can go and now celebrate, but not celebrate too much because in a couple of weeks' time, we're going to have the Aussies on and they'll want to be sure that they're in these final races. Yeah, so that will conclude things here from Scarborough Beach. It's just been a, a wonderful weekend. A big shout-out and a big thank you to all the officials and to all the, uh, the competitors and the volunteers that make this thing happen. A huge thanks, of course, to Healthway and SunSmart for their sponsorship. I'm Mick Collis on behalf of Hayden Marcato. It's good afternoon from Scarborough Beach.